Good evening. Uh, this is Toonkind D&D. <laughs> we have had a time already. Uh, my name is Wiz, uh, and I'll be your DM today. Uh, can I, my players, please introduce themselves? Name's D. I'm playing Marnie. Uh, Swarm Keeper Ranger and outsider to the studio. Yeah. Oh, good. I misread the list. Uh, that's me next. Hi, I'm Jazz. I will be playing uh, other studio cryptid, a much smaller studio cryptid. Um, it's a miracle that there are tinies in the studio that even know what his name is. Uh, I'm playing Resident Spaceman Adele. Hey, hello! It's I, the ghost of the Toon Paint server, Lewis. And even though we're in the studio, I'm not playing twice for once. I'm, playing, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of him, given how many pegging times he has been, you know, uh, name dropped into Tiny Games. I'm playing Captain, the funky bee. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, well, we're, we're going to get cracking right into it. So, firstly, I would like to introduce you all to Chris. Uh, she is a tiny who hey. lives in the studio, and uh, she's recently been looking for something. And as far as anyone can tell, she hasn't been able to find it and has been overheard saying something which I'm sure a number of uh, our party would find quite alarming. Something to the tune of, I can't find it here. Maybe if I looked outside. Yeah, I'll try that. <sighs> the captain's sixth sense has been activated. <laughs> <laughs> Who is going to commit shenanigans of the dangerous kind of shenanigans? <laughs> she doesn't seem particularly worried, and uh, it's uh, not hard to spot Chris leaving the uh, the p place in the prop room where most of the studio tinies live. Uh, she is bl bright blue, and when you're used to looking for people who are two inches tall, she's very easy to spot. And uh, so she has left the prop room, having just said, I'm going to go outside. <laughs> what are you going to do about that, Cap? Uh, no, Captain doesn't. So generally, I think Captain will do is tell people uh, that, hey, he's going to leave because, because someone has left without telling anybody, but nobody is here for him to tell, so he's just living without telling anybody himself. <laughs> he's just lying at full speed uh, behind Chris to try and stop her. Cool. And uh, I think yeah. uh, Cat flies a little faster than Chris, given that she's a butterfly and he's a bee. Um, yeah. So by the time he catches up to her, uh, she is disappearing into the pocket of a penguin's jacket. Good job. Captain's anxiety power has leveled up by two. <laughs> <laughs> because, a fun fact for everyone, because nobody uh, outside of the server really knows Captain. That he doesn't like uh, the giant people. He has, he has a thing against them. So seeing one of his fellow tinies disappear into one of their pockets, you know, not, not, not a good thing. No, not a good thing at all. But he's going to push for that and go into the pocket to, to, to catch her. So he's diving into the pocket after her. <laughs> yeah. Probably easy to see, given he's, you know, his pocket is also a very bright yellow. So Chris probably see <laughs> uh, 
directly outside of the pocket and tumbling into it. <laughs> <laughs> so she's going to, uh, she's sitting at the bottom of this penguin's pocket and she looks up as you, you join her and she's just going to blink and then smile. Oh, Cap, hi. What are you doing here? Hmm? Oh, I'm I'm what? catching a ride. No, no, we need to get up right now. Come on. What do you mean? It'll be fine. No, it won't be fine. Do you know what the outside is like? Just... Come on, yeah. he's trying to he's trying to grab her by the by the arm to try and get her off. Oh, okay. Do you want to roll a strength for that? Oh boy. Uh let me look. I need I need to have fucking studs in mind, which I don't. <laughs> yes. A plus <laughs> I was gonna say animal handling, but I'm not going to roll animal handling. <laughs> <laughs> that is a nine. That is a nine. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna nine. I'm gonna roll I'm gonna roll her a strength to contest. <laughs> He's a bit too freaked out to think correctly uh, about how to grapple. I'm just, I'm just picturing like he sort of latched onto her very loose sleeves, and he sort of pulls her slightly, and then she leans back, and then he pulls her slightly, and they're just having this like little tug of yeah. war over her sleeve. <laughs> yeah, also, he doesn't have fingers, so that probably doesn't help. Well, it probably doesn't help. Um. Jazz, do you want to tell me where uh, Dell is hanging out at the minute? Uh, probably somewhere, maybe in like the rafters or something. He doesn't really. He, he, as soon as he heard someone decided they were going to go outside, uh, he was immediately figured there's something up with that. But he he's the kind of guy to follow from a distance, so he's just kind of looking. He just watches Cap dive in, and he's like, oh, this is going to be a day, isn't it? <laughs> so, he doesn't <laughs> jump in after them, but he is very much keeping a very close pace. Okay. Um, as you're keeping really close to this penguin, and, and uh, you can't see Chris or Captain in the, the, the jacket pocket of this penguin, um... You can, you're watching him go through the studio straight for the front foyer. And it doesn't look like either of them are getting out of that pocket. You've been in the studio long enough to know that a tiny on their own can't really safely get out of the studio. And it doesn't seem like either of the other two are disembarking. Like I said, it's not... It'd take a lot for him to actually jump in with them, but he's very much... At this point, the longer it goes before they get out, he's just kind of slowly going on more and more alert. Uh, and if it... If push comes to shove and he sees that, uh, like, they do end up leaving, he is probably going to try to jump in. But other than that, no. He's still... No, they're definitely right. definitely leaving. Um, you don't have to take a ride on in the, in the, in the pocket with them if, okay. if that's not something Dell would do. Like, if you clung to the... Likely not. The... If you can follow from a distance, he's going to. Yeah, not if you want to go with them. <laughs> oh, boy. So, like, you could cling to the penguin's hat. That's also that's, an option. Yeah, that's probably something he's more likely to do. Also, since <laughs> he's light enough, he can he can do that and not be noticed. Mm. For, uh, yeah. because, for those of you who haven't uh, been in the tiny shadow, all, out of all of the tinies, Dell is the absolute smallest, standing at a single inch tall. <laughs> so there's a fun little fact for all of you. Yeah, so Dell is half the size of Chris and Captain. Yep. Yep. 
Oh, the antenna geez. is not counted in that, but it's so thin it doesn't particularly matter. But yeah, okay. he's he's an alien. He's not. <laughs> um, there is a. It feels like a really long time for this penguin to leave the studio, and for Chris and Cap, kind of half roughhousing in the bottom of the pocket, there is. A very loud kind of noise. And then the entire penguin jumps backwards. And um, can I get a dex saving throw from Captain, please? Oh, no. And so it begins. It does begin. 16, that's speak. good. 13 is so good. He's freaking out. <laughs> Um, Just kind of. As the penguin jumps back, um, both Chris and Cap are kind of flung down to the bottom of the pocket, and there happens to be a very small hole in the bottom, which they both fall through. Mm -hmm. But uh, because of those nice deck saves, you both manage to catch yourselves with your wings before uh, <laughs> plummeting too far. Um, Jazz, is, uh, Gendel fly? Sorry, I muted myself for that. He can't fly, but... <laughs> can I, can I get, in that case, a dex save from you as well, please? Uh, yes. Let me look. <laughs> is this a delta ice? Dang! Oh, no! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wow, that's nice. Um, I alrighty. Proficiency. <laughs> um, so, how would you disembark from this uh, penguin taxi? Uh, I, he's probably just gonna just jump straight off the hat and land where they did. <laughs> well, I suppose when you don't weigh very much. Um, it's so also you know so. He has a little bit of gravity shenanigans he can do, so he, he just he just hops down. Yeah, cool. Okay, Maybe so the, the twenty four, he might do like a superhero landing. Just that's just because of how high the hole was. <laughs> oh, fantastic! He's into the ground next to them, and he's unfazed. Mm -hmm. Um, as you started kind of get your bearings, the three of them are now finding themselves on the footpath. Next to the street, outside of Dodo Studios, oh, no. the penguin taxi had uh, jumped backwards so as to not get hit by a car and is currently running across a pedestrian crossing, shouting at said driver in an accent I cannot replicate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the second Captain sees Del is just like, oh god, there's two of them now. <laughs> uh, Chris, Chris is just going to wave it at um, at Del. I don't think she's met <laughs> met him before, but she's like, oh, hi. He, the other thing about Del, his his hair covers his eyes, and his like expression in terms of like his mouth, which is what you can see, is just completely blank. He he, he doesn't. Motion to respond in any way. He doesn't say anything. He just kind of looks his head back and forth between the two of you, and just kind of waits to see what you guys are going to do. Okay, okay, we're going back into the studio now. Oh, do we have to? Yes, we are. Why? But there's something I need to find, Cap. I was going to go back as soon as I find it. <laughs> The studio is already dangerous enough. You haven't seen the outside. Yeah, I have. <laughs> it'll be fine. Not that I know where the closest store for it would be, but hmm. What are I you may... even trying to find? I need a piece of pure moonstone. Mm. 
she doesn't look like she really wants to answer that. <laughs> Do I need to roll persuasion? Go for give it. Her the dead look? <laughs> it be, if I give her the dead look, would it be intimidation or persuasion? Uh, probably persuasion to start with. Yeah, because he has the thing is he has a minus one in persuasion, and he has a plus two in intimidation. <laughs> Captain is not very charismatic because nobody listens to him. <laughs> you no. love him anyway. He's trying his best. Really intimidation then. Why not? That's really is. Intimidation? Okay, thank you. <laughs> five. <laughs> Once again, nobody listens to him. Uh, I mean, just, just, just to cover our bases. I'm gonna do a whiz save to contest that. <laughs> no, not. <laughs> um, she, she sort of, sort of just sort of tilts her head at, at Cap and is like, it's okay. I got in once. I can get in again. And this will work. It means that you can help me carry it. <laughs> Oh my god, well, I'm definitely not leaving you alone. Um, hey, Jess, does, Cap, does Captain Nobdell's name? Uh, I'll let you figure that out. Do you think you know? Do you think he might have figured it out, or does he have no idea? I don't think he will know. He tries to stay in contact with all the tinies, but since Dell doesn't really talk, uh, Captain probably didn't try to push to learn his name. Oh boy. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's just looking at Dell and go, um, hey, Spacey, I suppose, I suppose I'm not teetering you either. Chris is actually going to um, crouch down slightly near near Dell. And uh, just just give him a green sign. Did did you come out with us too? Hi, we haven't met. My name's Chris. He uh uh he said like when you he gives like a really short nod when you ask if you uh he came out with y'all, but otherwise he just stays silent. <laughs> Oh my god, Captain is just standing here. <laughs> oh dear, dear. Um, okay. I'm gonna get from the two of you a perception check, please. Mm -hmm. And I'll do one for Chris too. I got a 19. Oh, yeah. We all I mean, no, I got, no, that wasn't me. I got a one. <laughs> no. That that one. Cap's, Cap's busy freaking out. Cap's Give busy it, freaking out. He's, he's already trying to figure out how they're going to get back in the studio. Mm. So oh, dear. Me and Chris both got 19. Yeah. Um. Okay, so... I'm sorry, Liz. Uh, just listen to how to talk to short people. <laughs> <laughs> oh Thank boy. you, Liz. <laughs> um, so you're looking around and you are on the footpath next to the street. And it's it's a busy street. There are buildings on the other side, there are cars, there are like um those power poles with power wires and what have you. And there is a little bit further down the street a number of small bushes. And there is what looks like a moth flying out of the bush towards you. Mm -hmm. Well, Captain doesn't notice the moth. So. Nope, Captain's still busy freaking out. <laughs> yeah, that's all he does. And uh, at this point, T, I'm going to let you uh, introduce yourself in whatever way works. 
So as the moth slowly approaches, it comes down and just lands on Cap's helmet. And in a voice that at first seems to be coming from this completely normal moth, uh, uh, there's a female voice that says, So, you all looking to be squished, or are you going to get out of the way? (laughs) Captain immediately jumps backwards. (laughs) <laughs> oh, uh, stepping Ooh. out of the bush nearby or near the path, uh, still amongst the grass, they see uh, this kind of plush uh, goat face uh, with soft horns and a large button eye. Uh, the other half of her face is like clouded in shadow with this uh, like hood. And she's wearing a long dark cape. Uh, peeking out from the front of the cape is a, what looks to be a, uh, bow made out of a paper clip, and the bow string is a rubber band. Chris is just going to give a big wave. Oh, hi! Hi. Who are you? you, uh, Who are you? Name's Marnie, and you're, you know, in the middle of foot traffic. Not as bad as car traffic, but still squishable. Oh yeah. Um. Hmm. Maybe we should get out of out of. Mm. Yes. Move. Oh. Hey. Do you know where to find stuff out here? I can find a lot of things. Depends on what you're looking for. Captain Captain is abandoned. He's just going to follow Chris and make sure she doesn't get into more trouble than she is already getting herself into. I do want to note that uh, she is about four inches tall, so she's... Yeah, and Chris is just so going <laughs> to... I think Dee's dead again. Oh no. Could you not hear me? No. Push Hello? to talk, AD. <laughs> I thought I turned the push to talk. Hmm. Come on. Come on. appeared out of nowhere trotting over to join you in the bush and uh chris as she's been coming over has declared do you know where to find stuff out here i know where to find a few things uh looking for food safe place to rest what you need i need a piece of moonstone pure moonstone uh well not the you know easiest thing to find i might actually know where to get some, though not an easy spot. She's going to do a very loud, exaggerated gasp and do some little little bounces on her feet and clap her hands together a little bit. She's very excited. Captain is sighing. Well, I wouldn't get too excited over there. It's uh, and you see as she holds out her arm, one of the these brown gray moths lands on it. Uh, 
cross the road. And a car whizzes by as she says that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, uh. She's sort of, she's sort of well, doing that, that that big think. Well, technically, Captain and Chris will be fine, because they can fly. Mm. And I, I mean, you think <laughs> that. <laughs> but the, the whole thing about how big the car is, how fast it's moving, you kind of get sucked in, and then the next one... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If I had it already, it wouldn't be a problem, but I don't. Do you know a safe way across, Marnie? Um, yeah, possibly. There's a chance you can go under the road, uh, which is dangerous. You could go try and trigger the crosswalk, which is dangerous. Or you can wait until night, which there will be fewer cars, but it's dark and it's dangerous. And there's an owl who lives around here. Oh. Hmm. She has resumed doing a big think. Mm -hmm. She's just going to stop and then look over at Cap and Del and give this really big, wide-eyed expression. It's like, do you have any ideas? Hi. It's been way too long since I have been outside. Do you really need that monster? I really need it. Hmm. Would definitely help convince me if you would tell me why. I need it. Well, if you need it that bad, you're uh, probably going to need a guide so you don't get squished. Um, let's see, I have two, two people who can fly, and what's your, uh, what's your specialty, Bubblehead? <laughs> bubblehead? <laughs> oh my god. He's got the space helmet, it really does look like a bubble. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, he, like I said, he doesn't talk, but what he does do is he takes the uh, grapple rod out of his hammer space, since I'm presuming they're standing next to the bushes right now. Yep. Yeah, so uh, he's just going to take out his grapple rod, and he's going to use the hook end and, like, fire it at, up at a branch in the bush, just to show that's how he can get around like that. And then he just, um, and he pulls himself up to the branch of that, just to, like, show. Marnie, that's his thing. Helpful. Chris helpful. is going to clap. Little, little tiny claps from Chris. <laughs> hmm. So, uh, how you know, stealthy are you? Last thing you want to do is be seen out here, especially in two points at Captain. Uh, some people are allergic to bees, squish on sight, you know. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to remind me of that. I... If you want, you can do an insight check. <laughs> uh, no, she she believes him. Yeah. But Chris and Doc can do one too if they want. Why not? Let's do it for fun. What's her insight? Nine. Yeah. Nah, uh, not really. Insight insight? Yeah. Hey, uh, Del, so you see Liz has written Cap PTSD in the chat. Yeah, yeah, you see that look on Captain's face. Yeah, yeah, no, you have. Okay, no, yes, yes, had an experience with that in the past. Sorry to hear that. Um, so, quickest way to get across the street is to trigger the crosswalk. Uh, it's about. Yeah, five feet up. And it's a very large button. Hmm. 
We might be able to push it if we work together, Cap. I guess. I just want to say at this point, Del just kind of drops down in the middle of all of them because he was up in the bush. So. <laughs> I mean, if you're not afraid of heights, you can go over, cross the light wire. Oh, that could work. That could work. Uh-huh. And I mean, I'm I'm not afraid of heights. And uh, well, what about you guys? Are you afraid of heights? Go shake them. Can't say that I am. I have plenty of eyes that go much higher than I usually do, though. And the uh, couple more of the moths seem to like swirl about her. Yeah, as you guys are watching, there's maybe 30, 40 of them that you actually start noticing in the bush. Aww. Aww. <laughs> you see a little jump of sweat. <laughs> uh, oh, dear. And then, I, I suppose the stealthiest route would be to take the sewer drain, go underneath, uh, but I haven't taken that route in a while. And I don't know it's moved in down there. Mm, I'd rather not get my wings wet. Has it recently rained? Mm, no, not really. But she's just heard sewer and assumed there is water down there. Fair enough. I don't think the sewers are the best option at all. Alright, so best option I'm fearing so far is either uh, we climb all the way up the pole, go across the traffic light, or we somehow trigger the crosswalk without being seen. I'll be honest with y'all, I, pref I prefer the height. Yeah, that seems like a good way to me. And she's just gonna pointedly look at... at uh... At Dell. She doesn't know anything about him, so she's like, what well, do you think? He just kind of gives a short nod. Alright. And she moves, uh, she like holds up a hand, and you watch as the moss form like a, a vortex around, like, above her, and then scatter. <laughs> oh, very dramatic. <laughs> and she makes Boy. a very, okay. like, you can tell she's not used to being around people by how dramatic she's being. So she's kind of playing it up. She makes a hand motion with two fingers and points towards the pole. Oh, this is exciting. This is fun. And she's going to uh, grab Cap's uh, arm and give him a small tug and then let go and start trotting in that direction. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, here we go. There's no choice anyway. Always got a choice to stay in the bush. I'm not. I'm not leaving her alone. Fair enough. Uh, buddy system's usually best, so guess I'll keep uh, an eye on Bubblehead here. <clears throat> I only got the <laughs> one, so don't expect me to keep the other one out for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll say at buddy system you can see Dell take just the slightest step back <laughs> but uh, he, he otherwise doesn't say anything but okay you can get all insight on him if you want but I will say it's probably going to be hard just because you know he hides half of his face at all times uh sure <laughs> I'll try Let's see, what is my insight? Any of you can, if you'd like. Yeah, see if two. you can figure out anything about the spaceman you've never seen. <laughs> you know, Chris got a 17. Three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, F. Oh, dear. Uh, Marnie hasn't been around like... people enough to tell, especially considering she's never seen Del before, I'm assuming. 
She uh, is not seen oh, anyone in quite some time. Oh, wait for a cap. 19! Yay! It was a higher DC. So, I'll say, Cap, you notice this step back, and you're not. You're really close. You think, you know there's something up. You can't quite tell what it is. Mm-hmm. But you know there's something. Ooh. Intriguing. Oh, boy. Okay. So we're all moving towards the uh, the pole to scale. Uh, um. as, as we do move, uh, the others would definitely notice as Marnie darts between cover and is always like almost hyper vigilant with how she's keeping herself hidden as the mm. others just kind of casually walk along the grass with her. Oh uh, no, no. <laughs> is the He's always looking around. Chris is cash. Chris is very cash. <laughs> Del- Del's also just kind of following behind. He's not actively trying very hard to stay hidden. Oh dear. Um okay, let's let's just roll something real quick. It's a six, that's fine. Um, all right, so the four of you get to uh the the pole without any any incident. Um so now comes the task of scaling it. Now I don't imagine this is gonna be a huge problem for Chris or Cap. Yeah. Um but, uh, yeah, <laughs> how do we how do we want to go about it? Like Marnie and uh, Dell in particular. Let's see. I have a rule of funny idea. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I'm scared. Which I have talked about in the tiny group chat before, so you may know where this is going. Um. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So Del has the jump spell, right? Mm. Oh my gosh. And if you do math on like gravity, <laughs> I, I'm doing it, Liz. I'm, I, that's why I'm asking. I'm asking beforehand. Wiz is allowed to say no. But uh, if you go by the base, the like game basis for Del, the planet he is from has ten times higher gravity than that of Earth. So normally he uses his suit. So he does. So he experiences gravity differently, but he can turn those off if he needs to cover a large amount of distance. And he also has the jump spell, which would triple his jump distance. So, for rule of funny, Del can just do a big ass high jump. <laughs> just does the whole leap. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I can find my numbers again, I can oh, because oh I did not. Is it the math? Hold on. Well, um, oh, I'm just trying to think. So, if this is a, that's why I asked beforehand. But that's funny or remember. plot? That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm just trying to think because if this is a um, a traffic light, uh, how tall are they? I can't think in feet very well. Um, you know what? I I think that's funny, so I'm I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. Um, I don't think you have to roll for the jump spell, do you? Uh, no, you do not. You it just happens. Um, okay, I think that that's very funny. <laughs> Can I also make a move on rule of funny? <laughs> sure. Uh, as Dell kneels down, Marnie just casually reaches into her coat and pulls out uh, basically a fish hook tied with dental floss. And as he like takes off, she just hooks the the <laughs> the thing into his belt. <laughs> 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 oh God. Are you um, <laughs> basically using him as a grappling hook launcher? 
Oh, I like that. If you'd been expecting Dill to be able to pull Marnie up, I'd probably have to go, mm. But uh, if it's just taking the grappling hook up there. Yeah, it's just. Then that'd be okay. I feel like the, the dental floss is probably thin, like light enough for him. Mm-hmm. And they come in really long lengths, so yeah, I'm I'm happy with that. Well, the the, the thought of a one inch Dell just sort of pulling Marnie. Marnie's what four inches, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, to be able to jump this high, he is doing well. No, she gravity. she's still on the ground. He he's just taking the line up with him. But yeah, he can do that definitely. <laughs> cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Oh, great. You've solved my uh, traffic light puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> the second captain sees Dell doing the fucking giant jump. He's just looking at him with big eyes like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> Chris has got round oh. eyes too, but hers have stars in them. She's just like, oh, cool. <laughs> Uh, From up there, uh, he takes the hook and just like places it up there so Marnie can, you know, get up her own way. Uh, but from where he is, he just kind of does a hand motion to tell him to come up. Resourceful little fellow, isn't he? That was neat. Oh, God. Extremely resourceful. Uh, so I have the athlete feet, so I'm just going to start climbing up. Okay, great. And um, I th- I think Chris will fly near Marnie, but like not completely overtake her. Yeah, I think same with Captain, just in case. All right. Ooh. Um... Can I get a either an athletics or an acrobatics from Marnie, please? Oh. Let's see, which is better? Probably not the negative one. <laughs> Probably <laughs> not. Um, there's the roller. Oh, that's a six. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Um, as you, you're climbing up the the line and there is a slight breeze and it's starting to pick up. Uh-oh. And uh, you can do a deck save, if you like. <laughs> to not lose your grip on your line. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Oh, come it's on. A it's another oh, no. three. Yeah, being bullied. Oh, no. Um. So the wind picks up. And there is a brief scramble. And then... The line slips between your. Do you have mittens or fingers? <laughs> uh, I have what are what's basically like the the three fingers that are not the index fingers. Uh, it's kind of oh, like yeah. a like a. Uh, can't think of the word. Uh, yeah, like a mitten, but like index finger and thumb. Ah, uh, yep, yep. Uh, yeah, you lose your grip on your line and. Um, Oh, that's a long way down. <laughs> um, can I? Can I? Two, uh, two friends who can fly. That's, that, that's true. Uh, does Cap want to try and catch money? Uh, yeah, he's gonna try. I would say that would be a strength. Straight strength. Yeah, straight strength. Okay, uh, let's see how terrible this will go. 
That's a 12. That's not bad. Uh, Chris is going to help too. That's four. She is of no help. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think it's a 12 is enough for Cap to grab hold of Marnie and <laughs> stop her from plummeting back down to her. Well, Del- Clint. Uses grapple, like the hook part of his grapple rod and try to hook on to Marnie. Sure. Yeah, because plan B was just panic web myself to the side of the pole. <laughs> like, I guess it would just be like an attack roll, except doing no damage, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Right, uh, uh, and they're all used for grappling. 12. Okay. Yeah, I think that'll do. Can I just take the hit? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Del hooks onto you and keeps you. Uh, Marty. So the hook like goes out and technically misses Marnie, but you watch as it the hook punctures through the back of her thick cloak, and she starts getting lifted up just by the cloak like a kitten by the scruff of the neck. Oh, fantastic! And she does uh, not look happy about it. I mentioned it in uh, the gallery chat, but because I'm unmuted now, I found my old math. So, oh, cool! Uh, if you want to do feet, uh, like the feet listed for whatever spell effect to inches, because tinies. Uh, at the 180 inch high jump, which still translates to 15 feet up, just straight up. God. Long jump, however, is uh, 480, which would be 40 feet. A 40 foot long jump if you decided to. And the spell lasts for a minute, so he can if he needs to. Nice. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Um, well, between Dell's um, grappling hook and Cap grabbing onto her, uh, we get money back <laughs> away from her, the precipice. Uh, Chris is of no help. She's just sort of like tugging at Marnie's cloak slightly. She's like, this is helping, but it's not. Um, <laughs> and we love her. I'm helping! <laughs> There's a number of, you can actually see like three or four moths on the inside of the cloak desperately flapping their wings, just as the same amount of useless. <laughs> She's a butterfly. She's not made for strength. Um, so, and you managed to get um, the whole, everybody up to the top of the pole. Oh, goodness. You're all at the top. Hooray. That's a long way down. Uh, Marnie does the, uh, like, cheek puffed out kind of pout thing. She curls up her line, stuffs it back in her cloak. That was, uh... We're good. We're good. We're good. It just, you know, didn't go to plan and kind of looked like a goof there. Oh, that's okay. Don't worry about it. It's better to look like a goof than looking dead. I mean, yeah. I, I would have caught myself, and you know. <laughs> He's very good at expression. I I could have caught myself totally. Uh, anyway, uh, and, and across the line. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's go. Lead the way. All right. And uh, yeah, Are you gonna lead across the uh, the electrical wire. Yes, I will. And to make it go... A, mm, yeah, she'll basically just kind of uh, tightrope it as best she can. Our captain is flying next to the line. He's not going to step on it. Mm. Since the jump spell is still active, will you let me do that again across, or do I have to do, like, actual <laughs> rolls now? I think the road might be... Oh, it's 45 feet, right? Uh, it was, I think, 40. But, you know. Uh, yeah, no, you know what? A, a road isn't that... <laughs> isn't that <laughs> wide? Because, yeah, no, they're only, like... Uh... So we can do a running long jump and just leap the entire thing. <laughs> well, this issue might be landing on the pole on the other side. Yeah. You can jump, but you will have to do an acrobatics at disadvantage to land safely on the other side. Uh... Uh... God, I want to go. 
<laughs> I want to know because it'll be funny. <laughs> oh shit! While while Dead. Dell's calculating That's the all funny. Uh, while, while Dell's calculating the jump, Marnie's taking the same line and she's tying a a like a a tight knot, but with a loop around the wire itself, and then tying oh, yeah. it around her waist. Good call. I'm not sure if Dell wants to, but I want to. I, his player, want to see this twist. <laughs> <laughs> Who so needs a spaceship? Because he has a good mod for that, too. So I'm so tempted. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I warning you. you. The dice are feeling vindictive today. Oh, boy. Well, um, Dee, why don't you roll me a uh, another acrobatics for getting across the uh, the electrical wire? And we'll see how vindictive they feel for you now. <laughs> see if they've had their fun. Oh my God. I am tied to the wire, though. Yep. Oh, that's a 23. That's much better. That's an at 20. That's beautiful. All right. Well, you get across fine. And, uh,. So it's just, uh, Dell. How are we going to do this? I know. If I don't try to jump the entire thing, can I still do just like a long jump onto the wire just to get a decent distance across? Uh, it's going to be hard to land on the wire. Yeah, <laughs> I, if anything, it'd be harder to land on I the wire sure. because it's it's not rigid and it, it does move because it's, yeah. it's just an electrical wire. And it is established windy. Ah, right. Yeah, so I'll just make, I guess, just a standard acrobatics roll to get across then. Sounds good. That's a 10. That's a 10. It's windy. It's windy. Uh, and uh, you did do a lot of showing off. Yeah. Um, this is my punishment for doing rule of funny. <laughs> <laughs> yes, apparently so. Um, okay, so you're making your way across the line and you can only get about halfway before the wind sort of picks up and Marnie's able to hold on with no problem, but Del, you weigh like a quarter of what Marnie does. <laughs> and He's um still lighter too because of the gravity oh, thing. Gravity shenanigans, yeah. Um and you are starting to fall. Like, you don't immediately just pitch off the side. Um, so you can do a, a deck save. We'll give you that, that lifeline. He also does have his grapple rod out, so if he needs to try to hook the wire to keep himself from falling. Mm -hmm. But you said just a regular deck save for now? Yeah, just a deck save. Start with that. Once again, Captain is here. He's looking at everything. He's going to help if he can. Cool, a 16 will do it. Um, so yeah, the wind picks up and the, the wire starts to sway. Del does lose his grip slightly, but after a frantic little scramble, you're now doing that whole arms and legs hug to the wire. <laughs> um, so you did not pitch down towards the traffic. <laughs> Del does not want to become one with the wind. Just, just inchworm <laughs> across the line. No, he's going to try. Going across regularly, he's not too terribly worried. So I guess just another acrobatics. Yep. Try that again. Never. Fourteen, much better. Um, yeah, that that'll be enough to make it to the other side without any problems. I mean, it was a good attempt. Goodness, with the way that you jumped, I thought that it would be easy for you. Space stays blank to both of you. you know where you are. <laughs> I'm telling you, you need not. When, at any point, you can try to roll insight to figure out what it is he's thinking. Good luck. <laughs> I think Captain is going to roll. Oh, I guess. Roll. Like I said, it's a high DC because of how his character is, but you can you can roll. That's not it. He does it. His That's face is thing. covered, his mouth is still just a straight line. No, oh, <laughs> uh, Marnie oh, leans over to the, the butterfly and says, 
So is he wearing a mask or? I don't know. I've only met him today. Hmm. No, no. That is just his hair, by the way. You can. It's. (laughs) (laughs) By the mind, I believe uh, Uh next step is getting down. As we figured out, down is much easier than up. Mm. Mm-hmm. Also, Bell is, uh, I would say, is he's, he's looking at, at Bell as he's saying that. Um, is Alf living with us? I'm sorry, say that again. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Uh, Captain is kind of saying questioningly, uh, Stacy, is Alf living with us? Well, already out this far. Bell is kind of doing his own thing, so you know. (laughs) Okay. Well, now we got to get down. (laughs) All right. um, I can leave the hook up here and climb down, and one of you flyers can just unhook it for me. Chris is going to do a little salute. I'll wait up here. That's no problem. All right, stick the hook in and start, uh, like, with the the rope, in quotes, tied around her waist, to, like, start rappelling down slowly. Del is uh, doing the same thing, because that's how his grapple rod Use the hook in. Embedded in the... Captain is, Captain is making the difficult decision of living uh, Chris up here alone, so to make sure that the person is going... I want to say, as Del rappels down, uh, for being very small and being able to do such a big jump that he did earlier, uh, as he's rappelling down, he seems to fall a lot faster than you might think he would. He'd be able Mm -hmm. to as he rappels down. Uh, Marnie takes, like, as she's rappelling down, she leans over and whispers to one of the moths on her shoulder. He's uh, kind of reckless, isn't he? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, it's weird. It's like a mask or a it's bubble. Not that, it's not that he's, like, being reckless. It's that he's literally physically falling faster. She she has no way of knowing that. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Um... I will get just a straight dex from Del and Marnie. All right. I'm just sitting here with my little anxiety. (laughs) Okay, we got an eight and a 16. Okay, luckily the DC for this was not very high. And, uh, again, it's still windy, but you do manage to get down to the bottom without any problems. I thought I was being punished from you, Um, yeah, cool. We made it to the other side. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> Marnie kind of pushes herself up against the pole to, like, keep out of the way of anyone who might be seeing her from the sidewalk. And then kind of waves up for the hook to be dropped. There's a uh, a, a pause, and then the, the hook comes hurtling down from above. Oh, wait, didn't think about that! And she kind of, like, ducks down and holds her arm, arms above her head. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Chris just threw it off the edge. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, she she just hopes her cloak's gonna stop the fishing hook. Oh boy! You have to duck away because it's too late to stop that fishing hook without getting earth. Oh gosh, you guys could do a dick save to get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Did you pull out both? I missed the first part. Oh, um, Chris pu- pushed the uh, fishing hook off the top of the thing. And uh, it is now hurtling down, so you can do a deck save to not get beamed by a 
fishing hook. Got a 19 for that. It's just yum dot out here. <laughs> Did Chris also tear out Dell's, or is he fast enough to rem- like be able to flick his out himself so he doesn't have to worry about it? <laughs> I wish he was only asked about the fishing hook, not about the grappling hook. <laughs> um, and a short while later comes a butterfly floating down, looking pleased with herself. Hello, you made it! So Yay! Yeah. Yay. <laughs> You gotta be careful with sharp stuff. Hmm? She said to throw it down. I I did did say something similar to that. Uh, um but a little mitten on his face. <laughs> Chris just has little little sparkles in her eyes, he's like, I did a thing. I deserve praise for doing a thing. You you did good, you did good. <laughs> Um, so which way do I, uh, am I leading them towards next? Um, so Chris knows, oh, actually no, Chris knows nothing. That's, that's been established. Um, Chris (laughs) has asked for a piece of moonstone and you do know where a piece of moonstone is. And from here, it's actually a very short walk because there is a alleyway, a mouth of an alleyway just there. And... That's way it is in there. All right. Um, so it's about this way. It's, uh, you know, one of the bigger folk, uh, about locket size, and she makes a little circle over her chest. Ooh. Well, that'll work. Cool. Uh, I, I'm, uh, where was the last I saw it? Do you know where the last I saw it was? And she turns and looks at one of the moths. And the moth, of course, says nothing because it is a moth. And she nods and says, all right, yeah, over this way. And starts heading towards the alley. Fantastic. Um, Inside the alleyway, it's a very typical alleyway. There's a big dumpster. There's a few trash cans. There's some cardboard boxes, etc., etc. And... The part of the alleyway that uh, Marnie leads the group over towards is just inside the mouth in a big pile of boxes. And amongst this pile of boxes, there is a gift box with a hole out of the corner. Uh, Marnie uh, goes through one of the boxes and uh, goes, Ah, I found it! And she pulls out what seems to be a very stale piece of pretzel. (laughs) I knew I remembered this place for a reason. Love Marnie so much. (laughs) Chris is just going to blink. I think Moonstone is blue. Oh, yeah, that's, that's three boxes over. Oh, okay. And uh, she's just going to trot off three boxes down and uh, start rifling around. Captain is keeping an eye on everyone. (laughs) Um, Not supervising the kids. (laughs) Uh, That's valid. Um, She's rifling around in the boxes for a little bit and then she sticks her head back out and goes, um, problem. It's, It's too big. Can you come and help me? Oh, yeah, I did say it was kind of... And she makes the circle again. And even for a big person, it is not proportional. You get the feeling she might not be all that smart or have great depth perception, besides having the bow. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, as you come over, the um, there is a piece of beautiful blue moonstone in this abandoned gift box and it's still very shiny and a beautiful color but it is as big as chris is and she just sort of looks at it and it's like i don't know how i'm gonna get it all back but help me get it out of the box anyway yeah uh sure um 
Let's see, what's the best way to do this? And she'll kind of... If you need. Del does want to help with the Moonstone at this point. He's coming over. It's definitely big enough that all four of you can just just pick it up, just grab a corner. Uh, the question. The hardest part is going to get back. Mm. Yeah, what was your question, D? Um, what else is kind of like, is there anything else scattered about the alley? Oh yeah, there's all sorts of things. Uh, like, there's, there's a dumpster and trash cans and and you know any, anything you could think of, you'd find in a typical typical alleyway. What we need is that generic one busted up roller skate. Oh, oh, and roll it over the road. Do you need a stone? <laughs> what was that? No. I'm getting flashbacks, guys. <laughs> 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 Do you need all the stone or just a small bit of it? Because we can try breaking it down. Oh, yeah, we could try that. Oh, but we got to get it out of the box first. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, you with the helmet. Help me out here. And, uh, okay. I will... Captain, by the way. I will <laughs> give you advantage. <laughs> oh, boy. So I have vintage on string shake strings. Chris is gonna grab a corner of this thing as well. Um is Del gonna gonna jump in and, and try and help pick it up? Yes, yes. So Are you breaking up there, Jazz? Yes. What are we what are we rolling is my question. Um, well. Um I'll get everyone to roll strength to start with for picking it up. Oh no. Athletics or strength? Like, would athletics strength. apply here? Is the question. Uh, no, this is just strength. <laughs> yep. That yep. would apply, but I, I did hear D said I had the vintage. Hey, I rolled a 12. I. Wait. Oh, the 12 was me. No. Oh. Oh yeah, you've got the negative yeah. in a negative one. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was relatively strong. He's just small even by tiny standards. Oh that that's that's funny. <laughs> okay. Um so you each grab a corner. Oh it's sort of more of a, an oval, so it doesn't really have corners, but you all grab a edge uh, of this thing and you attempt to lift it in and Dell's mm. corner kind of goes up, but the rest of you just sort of like Ugh. And I'm going to get all of you to roll a perception check real quick. Uh-oh. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like perception check. <laughs> That's a name. Captain, the simplest paranoid B. Uh, <laughs> doing very bad. I'm looking yeah. around. Oh, dear. Um. Okay, so... Cap, you don't notice this, but Marnie and Del, you both notice that Chris is suddenly looking very, very excited. Like she has sparkles in her eyes and there is this weird sort of grin on her face. And I am going to get all four of you to do a dex save. Oh boy. Mm-hmm. Do what? I didn't hear. <laughs> Just a dex save. I didn't... Oh. That's nice. I just have a Oh boy. Survival instincts kicking in. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that makes sense for Captain to have the last roll since he is the one we didn't notice. Oh, goodness. Goodness, oh. goodness. Okay, so what have we got? 12, 
and a 24. Okay, and we need one more. One more roll. Oh. Nice. That's a 22. That, that is not bad at all. <laughs> <laughs> Nor that other one. Hello, everyone. Hey, Star Wars. <laughs> hey. It is a moment Hello. where nothing has happened, and then the alleyway is filled with blue and purple, sparkly smoke. And while. Most of you did really well. There is a, an odd feeling of suddenly going up. And March, you feel a whole bunch of people, you think, hitting your legs very quickly. And when, oh the, smoke, when the smoke clears, there is... Standing at about four feet tall, a blue and white UPAN with a skirt, a bee like tune, a someone wearing a space helmet, and someone who looks quite plush wearing a cape. Are and they all <laughs> they all four of them are now four foot tall? Oh my god. Okay. Wait, delves equal height to someone? I didn't think yep. that would happen ever. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh, that was really shorter than everyone else. Chris is sort of lying on her belly with spirals in her eyes, and she looks dizzy. Uh, Marnie is going to do as goats tend to do when they panic. She's going to <laughs> freeze and fall over. <laughs> Aston is extremely steel. He's not moving one inch. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I just feel like it. Uh, Mark kind of Del like. Is, you can actually see his mouth move for once. You can't hear anything. You can feel him saying things. You can feel it, but it's inaudible. <laughs> <laughs> Has Del just not had the microphone on his helmet on the entire time? I told you this gag would happen. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Jealous. He's muted. <laughs> I told you this would happen. So Mark probably kind of like walked by at first, and then his, like all of the stuff happened. He just kind of like did a double take, just like, like what? Huh? What? Now <laughs> uh, yeah, you've definitely never seen these tunes before, and uh, the the girl at the very least, uh, the UPA, and Liz, Liz, she she looks dizzy. <laughs> She's stunned. Bro, and what? the the smoke is dissipating, just disappearing into very fine little glittery sparkles that kind of hover in the periphery for an extra second before vanishing. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Uh, Captain is looking at himself and suddenly he's yelling in garlics. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's definitely like, uh, are, are you... God, are you okay? Are you guys okay? Like, like, looks, at, looks at Marty, which is flopped, who is flopped over. Looks at Chris, who is, I think, dizzy. Looks at, at uh, Captain, who is uh, spilling out Grawlicks. Looking at Del, which is, well, Del looks okay, but like. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, you can't hear it, but. Um. Also, uh. When when March talked, uh, Captain jumped again and just started flying. Oh no! <laughs> and I'm going to get away from March. <laughs> <laughs> where is where is he flying? No, just just a bit away from you. He doesn't want to be near you. Is this a no, side thing down the alley or up kind of way? Uh, both. 
<laughs> Zoom gone. <laughs> Uh, and Mark kind of like falls in yeah, yeah, yeah. his eyes. It's like, oh, okay. Question. <laughs> mm-hmm. Did the moths get affected too? Do I have hawk sized moths now? Uh, unfortunately, God. unfortunately not. You still have a whole bunch of very small moths that are uh, buzzing around your ears. Moth yeah, the, moths. Yeah, there's, there's uh, quite a bit of them. And actually, now that we're big enough, uh, I didn't expect anyone to notice this for a while, <laughs> but you can see that the swarm is forming like con- like confused question marks above her head, and like basically oh her God. thought process is being mapped out it by the swarm. Oh, oh I like that. That's cool. Oh That's That's so good. Good. Also, I do want to say, meanwhile, Dell has probably taken out a thick leather bound notebook, and he's just writing shit down. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd say you can try to read over his shoulder, but I don't think anyone here currently has the mi- a coherent enough mindset to try to read. Yeah, yeah. no one has the brain cell yeah. right now. Marjorie's just kind of looking at the, these. The uh, how many are they? Uh, four, 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 mm-hmm. four, 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 four strangers, uh, like just like poofed out and from nothing. One of them is getting away for some reason. Uh, they're like, one is now starting to write for some reason. I don't know if Marnie's up already or or is she still like lying on the floor? I'm like, <laughs> what? Why was was why are we what? Uh, um, uh, how how may I, Captain? Captain, please come back. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is gonna gonna kind of sit up and just sort of put a hand on the side of her head. Go, oh, oh, my head hurts. Oh, my head hurts. Uh, I, I just realized something. Mm. Uh, March, the funky little bee who looks panicked and of his mind is looking straight at you because, uh, <laughs> I do you want to roll insight on this? Oh dear, alright. <laughs> <laughs> That's a four. Great! Since Dell currently has a brain cell, is he also allowed to roll inside or just March? Uh, I mean, you can roll inside. It was mostly for March, but you can roll inside too. He's. I'm gonna keep it real with that. He's pay- paying very close attention to everything going on right now. <laughs> Must document thing. He is! Great. And the dice uh, says so as well. Oh my god, that's a damn oh. one! <laughs> you probably even heard of this incident, but um, you see, Captain is a bee. Uh, March's head is made of flowers. Oh there my may, god. There may or may not have been an incident in the studio uh, a while ago. Oh, where see, Captain oh thought god. that Marcus said was a bunch of the flowers. I forgot we and talked the, about this! And <laughs> since the, the day, Captain has been very wary of March. <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, yeah, that, that look in Captain's eyes, that's recognition. <laughs> oh, oh my dear, oh dear. Um, Chris is kind of going to give her head a bit of a shake and try and get all the, the spirals out of her eyes and stuff, and then she's going to pull herself to her feet and dust her skirt off and then take stock and look at look at Del and at Marnie and then what the, the, the shrinking speck that is Apparently, Captain, and then it March, no, and then it <laughs> it that March, and then at herself, and then at March, and then the, the others is like, "Oh, I've never done it to more than one person before." Oh no, Chris, what happened? I'm, um, what I'm big. And Della uses big. grapple rod to try to keep Captain from flying off. Just kind of absent-mindedly look. <laughs> <laughs> like Captain's arm or like leg or whatever, just to keep him from flying too far away. March is is like standing there. He's just standing there, and he's like, 
he's definitely thinking to himself, am I interrupting something? Should I go? <laughs> uh, at, so Marty is going to push herself up to her feet, and you can see the moss above her, like, flashing, like, exclamation points and stars and, like... Oh. It's almost like a warning sign that she's about to do something very dumb. <laughs> and she just oh, starts no. tearing down the, the down the alley towards the corner. No, Marnie, where are you going? I have a cat I need to talk to! <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear! Well, you've only got an hour. Don't get lost. Oh, uh, she she like well, skids to a halt. An hour. Uh, hmm. Uh, you knew that it was, this was Oh, a little. I can only catch every other word from Louis, but I think that kind of adds to the experience of Captain. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just going to call Captain. I'm just going to call Captain. There. <laughs> Chris, um, her hands are covered by her sleeves, but um, just by the the shape of of the ends of her arms, you can sort of see that she's sort of tapping her index fingers together. It's like, well, kind, kinda, kinda. Oh my god! <laughs> I have to ask. I really have to ask. This is out of character. If if March would have have failed the deck save, would he become now a? Would he also be enlarged? No, no, he wouldn't have become enlarged, but he he would have uh, <laughs> uh, toppled over because of these four tunes that suddenly uh, grew basically into his crotch. <laughs> oh my oh god! Oh my so god. um, so we we managed to dodge that that. That would not have been pleasant for poor March. Um, so, also want to have been pleasant for uh, <laughs> Del keeping hold of Captain. Uh, it's not like a grapple hook thing. He's not firing it. It's just like a hook at the end of like a staff or whatever. So he's just he with one hand he's holding Captain, keeping him from going too far, and in the other, like he has his book propped on his hand and he's writing furiously in <laughs> one, of, yeah, one of his many notebooks. Not that he's not that far away. <laughs> Um. Yeah, Chris is just sitting there looking very sheepish and just looking at the others and then looking up at March and then there's just this sort of this blink, blink and then she looks back at March who is still significantly taller than all these guys It's like, oh, 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 you're a movie star. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, um, I- I'm an actor. Uh, Marnie, like, just kind of to emphasize how out of this she is, she looks up at the swarm of moss above her head. What's a movie? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, if we didn't only have an hour, we could have gone to see a movie. That would have been fun. Um, oh, yeah, it's kind of like a poster, but it moves. A window? Sort of. Sort of. Alright. Um, not sure what's so exciting about a window. But how the hell did you do this? Um, well, because of that. And I'm going to get everybody to roll me perception, please. Oh, oh boy. Captain, yeah. Captain is still trying to figure out and saying incomprehensible things. That's an eight. Smart, please. <laughs> <laughs> None of us have the brain cell. <laughs> Not brain cells, only panic. Not a brain cell. Like, not a brain cell. Like, I mean, uh, Del kind of has a brain cell. He's just also trying to keep Captain from flying off. Uh, no, that's that's <laughs> perfect. Um, so it's kind of hard to tell what Chris is pointing at because, again, she's got these really long sleeves that make her hands sort of odd shapes. But generally, you can see what she's pointing at. It, it but it takes some of you a minute to register it. That piece of moonstone that you had picked up, it got 
big two. And there is now a four-foot piece of moonstone sitting in the alleyway. Oh, my God. I don't think we can carry that. Oh, well, maybe we can. There is Um, frantic buzzing coming from someone. I'm sure you can figure out. I have big hands. (laughs) I wonder. In the middle of all of this, uh, he doesn't say anything. Uh, but he does just kind of motion a thumb toward what, like, say, I don't think we can carry that. And Del just motions a thumb towards March. And he just goes right back to writing. <laughs> he goes right back to writing in his notebook. Do, can we actually hear him now? <laughs> uh, no, because you see his mouth move. You cannot hear it. And the reason is because the noises he are making are too low for you to hear. Oh my god! <laughs> Amazing. Because when you enlarge, the vo- the voices get deeper, so you can't <laughs> actually hear what he's saying. You can oh. feel vibrations happening, probably. You can't hear it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well then. Um. Uh, do we? He's been to- muttering, but you can't tell what he's saying in any capacity. Oh. <laughs> hey, this is a big right. And pointing at the the actor. Yeah, more, yeah more more so you know what you mean by a big? Like, uh, yeah, he's tall, but like, huh? Are we going yeah, to rude. be in trouble? What for? We're not supposed to. We're not supposed to do anything. Do Do you guys need help? Yes. I need no. I need as much food as you can put in the bush by the traffic light. <laughs> you are going to make me very, very rich. <laughs> He's not putting two mittens on his face. He's dying. <laughs> March, who had been going who, who had been just going around just uh, just going on his merry way now facing requests from this new person who he doesn't know and he wants food in a bush he doesn't, Marty doesn't know what bush uh, Marty's talking about he doesn't know why he, Marty wants food in a bush of all places she's also very heavily armed openly <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like hmm like dying. Marty isn't really like scared but he's not scared. He's just like, very confused. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chris kind of uh, rubs the back of her head a little bit and then gestures towards the very large piece of moonstone on the ground and says, I need this, but I'm not strong enough to pick it up. Are you very strong? Mm-hmm. March kind of looks at the at the moonstone, looks at at uh, Chris. Looks at the moonstone. It's like, um, I'm kind of strong. Yeah. Do you think you could get it to the other side of the road for me? You're tall enough to push the crosswalk button. The, um, the cross, I, the crosswalk. We can use the crosswalk. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Uh, why? Why do you need this big moonstone? Oh, it'll get smaller. <laughs> not answering its question. <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> I think it might be the best thing ever. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Can Del just like bonk Captain to try to get him to calm down? Yeah, no, Cap- Captain is too too out of this. Oh, I I know. We 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 could do a trade, right? If you can help get this on the other side of the road, I could do something for you. Um, 
Uh, uh, I also Martin have some, uh, and Marnie starts, like, reaching through her cloak, uh, shiny glass, and she just starts pulling out things that are normally, like, a tooth cap, or a tooth cut, a uh, toothpaste cap, but it's as big as, like, an actual, like, full-sized mug, and yeah, she cool. just starts pulling cool. out these little, little pieces of, basically, garbage, but they're super-sized. <laughs> Captain is just, are we, are we really, goodness, are you, well, are you really all doing this right now? <laughs> I don't know how, if March will connect the dots of, like, these are big-sized uh, objects which are usual, usually are tiny. What, what, what do I roll for it? Like, intelligence? Uh, yeah, probably an int. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. That's a great roll. Chris isn't the faster way to get back down to size. March is too too much of what? Huh? What? <laughs> to understand anything. March is just standing there. Um, he, he really is. He's just standing there. He just wanted to vibe, man. He just, <laughs> he just wanted to like have a good time. Just like walk a bit, like breathe in the nice air, the breeze, and then just, like, these... These... Weirdos, these, you can say it. Weird people, like, this here, and, like, what? What? But, but you know, what if... Like, what if you did help us, and we got pretzels, fresh ones, with mustard? Oop, I haven't spent gold in a long time. We could do that. March is like, well, I'm not opposed to help helping you, but uh, may I just ask first, why do you, why and well, where do you need this to go? It needs to go uh in in that bush near the near the traffic light. And she points to the bush that they met Marnie in on the other side of the road. And very <laughs> concerningly, Marnie says, "Hey, don't crush my home with that thing." No, just slide it under the leaves. Don't drop it. Martin, though, very concerned because <laughs> this person is, le- is living in a bush? What? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Okay. what do you mean you live under a bush? I mean, I well, I live under the bush in like a little, you know, I, I guess it's a toy castle, but it's nice. Oh, that's nice. That's more questions for Mark. <laughs> because what do you mean? It, it's Captain it's a ca- just it's a toy. Moved. Captain has moved his uh, hands to grabbing on the sides of his helmet. He just he doesn't know how to stop all of this. He just wants to go back to the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mark probably noticed that and is like, are, are you okay there? No, I am not. I'm really not okay. Um. Just... Mark genuinely does not know what to do. I'm going to roll an insight for Chris. She never has the brain cell. That's, that tracks. <laughs> uh, I'll say, uh, Dell flips to like a random page in his notebook and he writes something and he holds it up to Cap, who is he still has the hook wrapped around. Yeah. And it says, um, the faster we complete this trade, the faster we can get back to the studio. And it's written in like really meticulous handwriting, I'll say that much, and it's like Captain Even though he scribbled it out. Handwriting. You, you he has decently good handwriting. He actually tried to make it look decent because common is not actually his native language, so he's trying really hard to make it legible. <laughs> I love him a lot. I love so he holds that up to Captain. Okay. Uh, I think it will take, like, a full minute for Captain to, like, Read and just calm himself down. He's just like, okay, okay, Captain, okay. Captain. 
can, yes. you can you can use the door. The, the door. You can open it. I see people going in and out of there all the time, but not like us. But like, no. you won't get it's squished. No, oh, I can't be squished. No, no, no. no I'm not. I'm not going in there with that size. Chris kind of uh, thinks about it for a second, and then she's going to go into her hammer space. Uh, hopefully. Yep. She goes into her hammer space, and she pulls out a surprisingly normal-sized, uh, proportionally to everybody, um, handful of gold pieces. There, It looks like there's like 15 gold pieces just sitting in her two little hands. Um, and... She goes, okay, well, how about we can get the moonstone to the other side of the road and then we can buy Marnie a pretzel for helping us and then yes. uh, would you like a pretzel? And she looks, sort of looks up at March. <laughs> and March uh, probably has stopped buffering now and <laughs> she's like, uh, sh- sure. Okay, so we can go and get pretzels, and then then by then it should wear off, and we should be able to go home. That sounds right. What, what wear off? What? Huh? Oh, uh, you don't have don't to worry, worry about, about it. it. It'll don't be fine. Why? Not knowing what is going on, is worrying about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. It's fine. Ah. Uh, all right. <laughs> okay, I can do this. Okay. March is mildly, March is mildly concerned for these people. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, one of them seems to be mute. One of them is having a panic attack. One of them lives in a bush, and the other one has no brain cells at all. Yeah. Lives in a bush and yeah. is drunk with power. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. Captain um, is finally calming down, which is good. I think on that note, it might be a, a good opportunity to have a quick little break, uh, get up, have a stretch, get some more water. I know my water is empty. Um, so we take five and then we can uh, <laughs> see how this goes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I need to drink all my water. I will be right back. <laughs> I barely drank from my water, so I need to actually drink. Oh, boy. This is incredibly hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy to be playing the anxiety bee. March is so confused. <laughs> He's like, what? Hello? Excuse me? Don't worry about it. It's and it's like an adventuring party just teleported right in front of him, but none yeah, of them look yeah. smart enough to know how to do that. <laughs> they all have no brain cells, and now there is a big ass moonstone, like just yeah. on the floor for some reason. It's like probably heavier than like everything. Also, uh, sometimes Captain is going to stare at. Uh, March and not stay near him because of the situation I explained before. Oh my god. No, he doesn't trust March because March is a, he's a master of camouflage whether he does it or not. <laughs> Captain is deep, but March is just fighting, man. March is just fighting. He's not, he's not responsible oh, for how he looks and I, the smell of flowers. He's not responsible for it. <laughs> I mean, he technically is, but like giving a break, he doesn't. He didn't know. He doesn't know there's a tiny bee, but is now and really angry, angry at him because of all the stuff that happened. You have to consider that Captain is very paranoid and once again doesn't like pigs. Yeah, that situation was not good for him. 
Part two. The last one was made to deal Larry the most psychic damage, but I think this game was specifically designed to give Captain the most psychic damage. Yeah, yeah. I, and like second choice is March, I think, because like March is confused. But also, yeah, psychic damage for to Cap. So like, yeah, for that FPS, you might have to check with Strat and Audio because they're the ones who do the tiny lore and things. Just yeah, heads up on that front. Check with either Tread or Audio to make sure that's a thing. Also, yeah, more yeah, so you got no context. Uh, fun fact <laughs> about Dell's regular voice. Uh, do I still have the voice changer? Or did I delete that one? Oh, no. Mm. Oh, no, not the voice changer. Oh, boy, the voice changer. We're in a break, so I can turn it on. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you're doing that, uh, uh, just the thought process here was... Marnie's intelligence is too low for her to be panicked for long. Oh my, oh my god. god. Oh, I think I turned on the Oh my god! <laughs> anyway, this is Val's regular voice when he was one of ten. He is now a full of big balls. And the fact that the middle of his voice is even deeper. I never heard that! 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 I never I can't. Oh my god! <laughs> it sounds like the guy from Murder Trivia Party. I, mean, I actually cannot understand jazz at all. It's like, hey, what hey, is that? Hey, what is Jess saying? I don't know. Oh <laughs> 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 Did Amazing. And you didn't catch exactly what I said during that because I know voice mods sometimes the voices aren't entirely okay. intelligible. Uh, that is Del's normal voice when he is one inch. Oh so God. now that he is four feet tall and he is exponentially bigger, the yeah. sounds he makes are too low for <laughs> for y'all to hear. This is so that's why what that's why he was muttering in the first place because he he already figured that he couldn't be heard anyway. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Brilliant. So yeah. all right, oh, I'm ready to keep going if you guys are. Sure. We are. That would be ready. Big time. You, all I, right. If Bell is muttering now and he's like, I guess in quotation marks, talking. You can try to read his lips if you want. <laughs> He's not always speaking uh, common though, so whether it will actually be successful is <laughs> mm. to be determined. Oh dear. Well, that's All right. for another tune. <laughs> Goodness. Alrighty. So March now has a a preposition from this blue and white UPAN to take a four foot piece of moonstone from some random back alley across the road and put it in a bush in exchange for being bought a pretzel. <laughs> <laughs> sure, he doesn't have anything else to do, probably. I'm saying it now. He doesn't. It probably has, like, one of the only times he... he the, the people he, like, works for in, like, the rest... In, like, the other... His other workplace actually bullied him into taking a break. So this yeah, this is one day off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the one day off they managed to bully him into taking a break. <laughs> Never again. <Ooh. laughs> Never again. <laughs> um, and Chris is uh, just sort of smiling very expectantly at you, and she's she's not Ghiblian, so it's not Ghiblian sparkles, but it's very exaggerated, toony little stars in her eyes, and she's just going, "You're gonna help, right? 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 Right?" <laughs> Baby, sure. Yay! Oh, this will be good. This will be very good. And she's just sort of gonna reach out and give Captain a little bit of a pat on the arm and say, "See, see, it's fine." <laughs> This <laughs> is doing an extremely big sigh. You don't know, you don't know how it did such a big sigh. It did it anyway. <laughs> it's because he's he's now four foot tall rather than two inches. He's got bigger <laughs> lungs. 
<laughs> Big legs to scream. Uh, Marty okay. excitedly, uh, like, again, over dramatic kind of Batman style, like, swishes her cloak around her and says, Onwards! And quickly ducks around the corner to move towards the crosswalk. <laughs> And when the group comes around the corner, they just see her, like, deliberately, repeatedly pressing the crosswalk button just because she can't. <laughs> oh, I love her. <laughs> um, okay, so can I get a strength check from March, please? All right. Strength uh, check or save? That's a uh, 21. Uh, Never mind. 21. I don't need it. It's fine. I will get uh actually I'll I'll do that in a second. Okay, so you you reach down to pick up this admittedly a piece of moonstone the size of which you've never seen before. It's as big as any of these tunes are. Um but it's it it it's heavy but not unbearably so. Really it's the size of it that makes it a little unwieldy. So you do have to use all four of your arms in order to kind of pick it up and, and hold it um and uh and we're making our way over to the crosswalk yeah probably Del stepped out as soon as Marnie did he's in very intently watching Marnie right now <laughs> beep 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 wait <laughs> like having... wait 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 <laughs> 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 Chris is just pleased as punch. She's just, just like, yep, yeah, whatever. Um, and you're standing there at the side of the road, waiting for the light to change. And I will get a dex save from everybody, please. Oh, oh boy. Lord. That goes well. That's a 13. I have advantage, as always. That's a 7. More, please. That's an 8. Yay, and I have a seventeen. Okay. No, that's that's pretty good. Uh da 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 da. Oh. And Marnie. And, okay. So we got the eleven from Marnie. And what did you get, Staria? You got the uh thirteen. Oh the that fourteen. Okay, cool. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh boy. Okay. So as you you're sort of standing there. And you're watching sort of the cars go by, and at the very, at the very least, I picture for um, Marnie and Dell and <laughs> Captain. These cars don't look as big as they used to. Um, and there is a big truck hurtling down the street, and you can kind of see the light has changed to orange. But the truck has decided, oh, no, I can make that, and has not slowed down. Ass oh, white. <laughs> and <laughs> that's me, not Adele. I'm rude. <laughs> rude <laughs> I know too many people like that. I know. And a driver. You, it, it careens through the intersection past you, and there's a big... Uh, like the it has a big twip, slipstream of air that goes past and its tires run through a puddle on the road and mm-hmm. Marnie you are soaked <laughs> and the uh, the big piece of moonstone seems to shield March from from getting from getting wet. Alright, that's good at least. Uh, Marnie stands there for a second and then pulls out her bow and arrow and fires after the truck. Oh my god! is, I I guess at this point it's a like three foot long sewing needle. Oh god, yes it is. (laughs) Oh my god. I mean, Captain on one hand, Morty, why? On the other hand, that's what he deserves. It's what he deserves. <laughs> She's used to, like, her entire world is either eat or be eaten. Oh my god. Uh, or beat just, or be eaten. 
Uh, just for shits and giggles, roll me an attack. Hey, right, oh, uh, no. so this is dexterity plus proficiency. Captain would have tried this some morning, but I think he wasn't expecting that. And so I'm not going to roll for him to try and stop. Uh, they do, uh, everyone does see as, like, the, as she pulls back the, the rubber band bow, uh, you watch as the, along her forearm, the moss line up, and then, like, start, like, adjusting to, like, adjust her aim. Oh <laughs> and that's how she that's fires adorable. with no depth perception. Oh, <laughs> 17. Nice. I I think that'll do. Uh, You let loose your arrow, and it is not like a normal archery arrow, which is typically made of wood. It is a needle. It is made out of metal, and it pierces the back of this truck, and you can just see it's it's just pierced into the back and is just sitting there, and as it disappears into the distance, this needle kind of goes with it. And then it is gone. Huh. Mars. Mars kind of looks at the at, at the needle, looks at Marnie, and just like, H- how about we don't do that next time? Yeah, it was. Yeah, um, yeah it's like don't, don't, what? <laughs> but it was, it was, it splashed me, and like, oh. It, um, yeah, he was that. Per, they were a terrible driver. That person was terrible. Uh, should know the rules better, and I don't really uh, feel bad for him. But them, but uh, also probably don't shoot people and their cars because that will get you into more trouble. I don't understand. There is no law enforcement where she is from. (laughs) (laughs) Basically, what you have to keep from this is don't shoot cars. All right. Um, Are you sure? It's a really good opportunity to do it. Don't shoot cars. (laughs) All right. If you shoot cars, the people will get mad at you. And Mm. that's not good. Wait, there's people in those things? Yes! Just like, blink, blink, blink. I'm sorry, did you not think there were people in cars? I, I, thought, I thought they were just really fast monsters that squish people. <laughs> Hello? What? <laughs> Much is looking now, like, looking for, from Marnie to... <laughs> from from Marnie to Cap, just like in a look of like, hello, what? Huh? Captain just looks in March and say, I can't do anything about that. Like, oh, you see that look in his eyes, he doesn't even need to say it. It's, it's just like, it's just like, like um, the lights turn green. I don't know if uh, pedestrian crossings make noises where all of you guys are from, but here they kind of make a duka 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 kind of noise when it's time to cross the road. <laughs> uh, Marnie's oh, uh, like floppy goat ears will like perk up. Oh, that's the signal. Uh, yeah, and Marnie kind of like he, he's like he's processing this. He, he, he's trying to. But, like, at some point, like, realizes he's been standing. He's like, oh, wait. And he, he just, like, follows Marty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Too used to crossing the road this way. She's just gonna full-blown sprint across the road. <laughs> Marty's like, that's not the next step. <laughs> Now we're oh, the Mar- the scale has been furiously writing in his notebook the entire time. Chris is just skipping. She's is just sort Bell, of... like, looking at the road, or...? He has his eyes covered. You, you, you <laughs> can you tell? <laughs> you are just surrounded by people who don't think about 
Oh, well, Dylan is watching where he is going. It's just that you can't specifically see that because he has his eyes covered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, guys, please. And he's like, he probably can't run after Marty because he's holding the moonstone. (laughs) And and he can't hold hold all of these children because (laughs) he's everywhere. Oh. Marshall doesn't think that all of them are children <laughs> because, like, Cap and Dell are grown men. Well, not yeah. not really. Well, probably not children, but like all of these tiny, all of these people. He's thinking about you. He's thinking about like. Hmm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Dell is yeah. his face buried in a book, walking along a, like a hallway, and, like man, just to definitely avoid everyone. That's that's <laughs> Dell writing in his notebook right now. Nice. Um, so it takes Marnie all of, what, two seconds to get across the road at a full sprint. That's a lot <laughs> less time than it normally takes. And a lot less panic on the other side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so you guys have gotten across the road. <laughs> it's a lot easier than the way over. It really is. <laughs> yeah. does not even think about that. There's just there's there been too many, too many thrills today. <laughs> Chris is having a great time. Um, feel free to roll insight on her if you like. Okay. That's a seven march, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's a party. None of us are insighting today. Oi. Uh, no, that was oh, definitely... I for one second, and then... And then <laughs> oh, boy. Also, while I'm saying, uh, like, the order of us, we have Marty sprinted across, I'm assuming Chris skipped across. Is, like, March lagging behind because he's got the crystal he has to carry? Yeah. So, uh... Crystal, you say, Jazz! Yeah! <laughs> Are you gonna make March eat the moonstone? Do it! I dare you! I double dare you to make March eat the goddamn moonstone! <laughs> Fuck you! Anyone listening into this who doesn't have context, I'm sorry. <laughs> mm. This is why you must watch the full dis- discography. Oh, this isn't even from like a game. This is like an old ass joke. I'm sorry to anyone who doesn't have context, but also, I swear to God. Oh, boy. Um, I'm not apologizing for that joke. You brought it on. I was going to give you the chance to see it if you want. Oh, dear. Um, so is Marnie so gonna? So <laughs> is Marnie gonna roll an inside, or is uh, she too fascinated by being on the other side of the road so quick? Uh, Marnie does not know how to read people. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, okay, so Marge has no idea, uh, but Dell and Cap. The way that Chris is moving, you get the distinct impression that this is not the first time this has happened to her in the slightest. Oh, my God. What I was going to say before I was so rudely interrupted. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I was saying that Dell is probably walking about the pace that March is. So if March wants to try to read into his notebook, he can. Um. That's on I'm one doing. hand, I want that sweet lore. On the other hand, March is too polite to like read other. Fair enough. Stuff. I was giving you a chance if you wanted to. You don't have to. I will because <laughs> March may like because he's walking at that pace. You can just say it's absolutely. Uh, yeah, you see into it just because of the way he's holding it. Um, it's this weird mixture of common and some other language. You can't read it worth a damn. It's nothing you've ever. seen. Um, and from the gist of it, uh, they're like, oh, it's a little little ODC. I'll let you have it. Uh, he's been taking notes on, like, you can see some of the, because of the page he's on, he has a lot on how Marnie reacted 
to you can't tell what because like I said half of his notes are in an alien language um but taking notes of reactions and how uh Marnie has been interacting with the world in the way she has been <laughs> so you you can kind of get the gist of he's a dude who kind of you know studies people March is not seeing March is looking away March has no idea what is happening. March is looking away. <laughs> How does March feel about half of the notebook just being filled with random symbols that he can't read? Well, this, I mean, there, there are many languages. Like, March knows two languages which are not very it's common. Not, like, It's not like, even, like, a random real kind language. It's not a dialect in Ankwell. It is, like I said, Dell is an alien. That is an alien language. You have no <laughs> Well, there's probably there's, there's probably a story behind that, but he's not going to like <laughs> he's not going to like look into that. Like he just he he's he's so confused, y'all. This is just adding <laughs> so much more. I am so sorry. Also, March, is a, March is a polite boy. March will not <laughs> like just like go and like, hey, what is that? And like, no, he's not he's, like he doesn't know, really. Oh, you all arrive safe and sound on the other side of the street. And uh, Chris goes and stands over next to Marnie's bush and just sort of looks at March really expectantly. She's just like, if you could just sort of nudge it under the leaves just here, that would be great. And then we can go and have pretzels. Wait, wait, before you do that, uh, just, um, give me, give me one second. Um, uh, and Marty will, like, get down on her knees and, like, start, like, pushing under, like, pushing herself underneath the bush into a space she clearly no longer fits into. <laughs> <laughs> and when she does come back out, she is holding what looks to be maybe a, like, the, uh, the Barbie-style dream house kind of castle. Uh, one that is has like dappled sun bleached light on it and the bottom half of it's just covered in dirt for sitting in the ground too long March looks at it and is it's like he looks at it looks at Marnie which is probably like 10 times the size of it looks at it back <laughs> and like so you live in this Yeah I uh I keep my journal in um oh it's kind of hard to um Oh, there's a little latch here. It opens. And she uh, opens the house she's been living in. <laughs> <laughs> I was sort of splits into the hinge. Like, and... Random furniture and stuff that Marnie is now shaking around. <laughs> she has not no like she has not realized she's got a hell of a mess to clean up. I know. Uh, uh, from experience on that front, you cannot pick up a dollhouse without fucking up absolutely <laughs> everything inside of it. Uh, Marty is just like looking at the dollhouse and is like, do you need a place to stay? Uh, She opens it up and like, there's an instant grimace as all of her stuff is just against one wall. (laughs) And she kind of just says, oh, um. And she pulls out a small book about one of the size of, to a tiny, it would be a well-sized tome. But it's like one of those little uh, pocket flip books to us at the moment. And she offers it out to uh, March. March kind of like, is you know, like the, the, the gif of like the person like blinking. That's currently March. He's like, I'm sorry. What? He's not saying anything right now. He's just like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, that that's the one. Uh, so he'll like. He kind of like puts down the pu- puts down the the moonstone and like is Marnie handing over the the tiny book to him? Mm-hmm. Uh, he will uh like take it probably in, like it's probably like fits in like between his like thumb and like index finger and it's like okay. He's like. <laughs> So like afraid he'll accidentally like tear it. It's like it's so tiny. Oh. <laughs> That's got about 
Uh, and she looks inside the house. I think I started that one two months ago. Uh, it's like a journal, a log, uh, basically a record of me in case I ever, you know, don't get away from the cat. He's, he is now super concerned. Like, do you want a place to stay? I can ask you if he's okay with another, with another person in the house. Captain is having a lot of thoughts about the fact Marnie doesn't care about reveling all her stuff to a big. She she's <laughs> just too excited at the moment. Uh, I, I I guess it could be moving day, and she starts looking around the little park area that's uh that that has the bush and the grass. Ah, uh, where to put this? <laughs> Grace is just sort of going to give a big right. blink and then she's just going to give Marnie a, a small little nudge and she's like, we don't have that one. Don't you want your pretzel? Oh, yeah, very much so. And she's just kind of holding the castle with her. All right. St- me, the player, I am like laughing so hard right now because Mark has accidentally acquired a tiny child. Oh, uh, <laughs> Mark. Mark, meanwhile, is like very concerned, very, <laughs> very worried for this person who apparently lives in a in a house that's like smaller than them and also lives in the streets and also is appa- apparently lives in constant danger of dying because of a cat. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> well, so it's part very desocialized person, part uh I don't. I don't know how There's to no say without being mean. Uh, <laughs> she is kind of ruthless when it comes to hunting, <laughs> as 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 evidenced by the truck. Mm. Also, something in the middle of all this, but like I said, you can't understand what it is. You just feel vibrations, I guess. You can roll if you Does your character understand that the? Uh, vibrations they are feeling is coming from Dell currently. You can roll to see that if you'd like. I'm gonna roll an int for Chris to see if she can figure that out. What's her int plus one? Nope! That's two. I'll roll in. Does anyone like to see well. they can figure out that when Dell's mouse is moving is when they are feeling That's a nine. Sorry. Vibration. March is too focused on worrying for this Flush person who is like currently like lives in fret of dying at all time and also what? Hello? What? And apparently just lives in a lot in front of the studio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm God, they all got far away from I the studio. Huh? I probably... <laughs> oh, um, roll intelligence to see if you can put two and two together that. The vibrations that are currently shaking your head are when Bell <laughs> opens his mouth. Uh, you know the feel, though, when you hear a really loud noise, you feel like a vibration in your temples or whatever, that kind of thing. Just straight intelligence? So, uh, yeah, just, just straight inside, Like, I guess. I think that's how that works. Just, I don't remember which one does which. I don't remember. I'm just loving the fact that Chris is rolling a Abysmally. It's fantastic. She has no brain cell. You feel the vibrations again. You don't know what's causing them. That's a 15. Uh, I'll say Cap. Yeah. Uh, You see Del, like, uh, his mouth is moving. It looks like he's saying something, and then you just, you feel the vibrations just in your body again, and you're like, oh, okay. That's what's causing that. (laughs) Oh, how does okay. Captain How does Captain feel about that? Dell is speaking too uh, low to be heard. Captain, I don't think Captain has ever heard uh, Dell speak before. 
Uh, no, I don't think any of the Chinese have heard Del's yeah. tiny voice, so. Mm-mm. Yeah, he's very confused about why <laughs> Del sounds like that. But he's like, Marge, he's not like he's going to ask. Like, maybe that's just a thing that Del's speaking does. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I imagine that the, the the vibrations are just the helmet is slowly being blanketed in moths to try and like muffle the sound. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, was, that was one thing I was going to mention. How do the moths feel about the giant light that's on the end of the antenna on top of Dale's helmet right now? You have not oh, been left that? alone for a moment. That's about what I'm <laughs> yeah. If you know, Pikmin, the tops of the helmets of the captains have very bright lights that will sometimes flash to uh, when they need to communicate things. So he has a big old purple light up there that uh, the moths aren't. <laughs> That's great. I love that. Um, okay, so March, I think you've still got that really big piece of moonstone in your hands. Are you going to um, put it down? Yeah, I'm probably gonna like put it down, like on the floor, and like start nudging it towards the bush. <laughs> because you, like you can get it pretty pretty well under the bush. Like it's it's it is a four foot piece of moonstone, so it's kind of it it doesn't fit completely under the bush, but you can kind of tuck it in on the opposite side to the footpath so that it's at least hidden ish. And and Chris is just sitting there going, ee. Marnie will try and help by like pushing at it with her foot. <laughs> okay, um, pretzels. Uh, you might have to guide us. I don't know where we can buy pretzels. We've got time for pretzels. Right. Yeah, we got time for pretzels. All right. Then, Mark, uh, do I have to roll some, anything for that, or? Uh, give it a survival, just for just oh, good boy. fun. Oh, just to see all the Another great roll. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a history, but. Oh, God. Oh, okay. Well, I guess we're getting lost, lovely. then. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're getting lost today. Oh, uh, I think Marnie could probably uh, roll a survival as well, because while the perspective is a bit different, you at least know what any of these buildings are. I was about to say, we have two rangers in this group. We literally can't get lost. <laughs> uh, I may have specked into stealth. <laughs> it's, it's a ranger thing. Uh, your group can't become lost except by magical means. And we have two huh. rangers. We literally can't get lost. That's oh, cool. Yeah, cool. Oh, that's I didn't know that. There you go. I learned See, a thing. Has a twelve at least, at least it's a revised thing. ranger. That's the thing. I don't know which ranger Marnie's using. Uh, she's a swarm keeper. I mean, like, there's a normal ranger, and then there's like a revised one. Because let's be real, the normal ranger kind of sucks ass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I, I am using the alternate rules. Okay. Yeah. Um, I so we well, with, <laughs> with those rolls, I imagine that March kind of leads them down the street with a, a particular pretzel vendor in mind, but uh, they aren't on the street corner where March was expecting. And Marnie sort of goes, oh, no, wait, they are down this street now. Like, they moved, like, a week ago or whatever. I can smell them. They're this way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lead the way. And uh, there is a... A vendor there. It's it's one of those big carts with the big umbrella, and it's not just like uh, uh, the little hard pretzels. These are the the big, soft pretzels, and oh, you can you can awesome. tell oh, yeah. that they are they are making them fresh there. Um, and uh, Chris looks pleased. Says, "Oh look, look, pretzels! Oh, they're big pretzels! Ooh." Very big pretzels. Uh, what do you want on your ca- on your pretzel? And she sort of give, gives um gives Captain and Dell both a little nudge. Dell just kind of taps his helmet as if to like he's trying to like signal he, he can't eat it. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, because she's been rolling so well, I'm going to roll her another end. Oh my god! She's just going to buy <laughs> one anyway. 
Please. Please. Blind Dell a pretzel anyway. Uh, okay, no, you figure it out. I'm gonna do it at yeah. disadvantage because that's funny. <laughs> Fair enough. No, no fun. Fair enough. That's oh, it's still game. 16. Okay, so this is a sort of. Oh yeah, you can't get it out of your 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 hat. Hmm. Hmm. Do you want one anyway? Uh, he thanks for a hot second, but eventually shakes his head. Oh okay. Yeah. Uh, Cap, what do you want on yours? Uh, I'll I'll be fine. Thank you. Hey, you don't have a strange hat excuse. You can still eat one. <laughs> what? Is it to do? I don't, don't want really to eat one. You can no. you can you feel one if yeah. you want to. I don't really want one. Okay. He's, he's still <laughs> down thinking about getting back to the community. Think about eating pretzel. <laughs> oh boy! And uh, she's just going to tr- trot over and um, give March and Marnie a small little tug on uh, their respective arms. Okay, which one do you want? Which one do you want? Ah, uh, oh, ah, uh, cheddar, 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 bacon. Oh, that sounds good. Ah, uh, the 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 cheddar bacon. Uh, the stuffed one. Uh, I've only seen like a couple of those. Okay. And the other. What about you? What would you like? Uh oh, just a regular one with salt. Okay, plain with salt. The cheddar and bacon. Mm, I'm gonna get one with mustard. Okay, sounds good. And she's just gonna go up and dump a whole bunch. And you suspect it may be way too many coins on the countertop. <coughs> Excuse me. And is uh, handed several very large soft pretzels, which she distributes. And she shoves a plain one into Captain's hands. He has no say <laughs> in the matter. He's getting a pretzel. He <laughs> uh, plays a very tiny thanks, but he just puts it in his other space for now. <laughs> He's going to have a very large pretzel later. <laughs> Good or not. Uh, Chris is just going to take a very large bite out of it. She's happy. <laughs> uh, Marnie will take a bite and then, like, her her eye doesn't change because it's just that, that simple button. But there's just this, like, look of excitement that overcomes her face and probably a bit too quickly she eats it. <laughs> oh, you're hungry. Do you want uh, another one? Yeah, another one. Um, am I going to blow up? Blow up? When we get Why? small again? And how no, 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 no. No, you'll be fine. Then another one, please. <laughs> oh. She's going to turn back to the vendor and they're already standing there with another, another pretzel because she just threw all this money at them. They're like, just just take it. Basically opened the tab. <laughs> kind of. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. This is Mark fun. Kind of like, Mark eats his, his pretzel like normal because that's like normal for him. <laughs> <laughs> that's a regular pretzel for a regular, in a regular <laughs> situation. <laughs> Nothing wrong here. It's fine. Right. Don't worry about it. Bill's probably yeah. just like found a place on a bench nearby. He he put uh he probably pulled out another notebook, maybe two of them, and he's like comparing notes. <laughs> um, Mark will probably go sit, uh, near now, like probably not right next to him because that's personal space and boundaries, and Mark is too polite to like disrespect that. But also like probably like same bench. If um, Marnie, if Marnie can, uh, with like the quote unquote tab open with the pretzel vendor. She's just gonna start <laughs> stuffing them in her cloak. <laughs> as many as the guy will give him or give her. Uh, you you get another two pretzels. But like the the big expensive ones that are like stuffed with cheese and bacon and Yeah, she definitely like stores those away in her cloak and hopes they'll shrink with her. 
Uh, Chris is sort of getting a very contemplative look on her face and she's just covered in pretzel crumbs. It's like, hmm, oh I think we've got enough time. Did you want to look at anything else? Mm. Watch eternally is like, got enough time for what? <laughs> he's not saying anything, but he's internally, he's like, enough time for what? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I fought a, one of the metal beasts. I got enough food to last for months. Um, the cat's pretty far away, so. Hmm. And she just kind of like stands there contemplating. <laughs> And she's gonna while Marnie's thinking, she's gonna sort of look over at um at at Captain. It's like, do you wanna look at anything else? Uh I'll be honest, I, I would prefer if we would stay near the studio. Well, we can't go too far. We don't have that much time. Um yeah. we can go shopping. There are more shops. I still have some coins left. Oh, uh, can I see one of those movie windows? Oh, we don't have enough time for that, but, um... Mm. But, um, oh, they normally... Mm, they normally have a a picture on the front. Um, oh, maybe he knows. And she points over at, uh, at March. Like, maybe he knows what they look like. Um, do you... Can you explain what the movie theater looks like? I, I haven't seen it. Um, uh, well, movie theaters are, well, first of all, they're, it's a building, but you go into it. March is explaining all of it for, like, step to step because he doesn't know what the what they know, so he's just like, why do we well go all, over all of it? And so uh, do you get in through... Do you wait for someone to go in through the door, or do you climb in through the vent, or is there windows usually left open? Uh, no, no, you walk in through the front entrance, and you pay for a ticket, which is a piece of paper you pay for and lets you in. And uh, then you have, there are a lot of seats, and you take one of them. Usually, uh, you choose what seat beforehand. And uh, then you watch the movie, which is a bunch of uh, pictures, which are uh, to, which together make them look like they move. And there's uh, and they tell a story. And uh, March is kind of fumbling, and it's like, <laughs> oh. So, so the window has a storyteller behind it that draws a bunch of pictures really fast. And then you get the story, and does it, like, tell you anything? Well, um, it's not a person who draws the, the story. It, it's already pre-made. It's, it's been filmed before. It's been, and, uh, it, the story isn't really, it's for fun. Oh! Okay, I like fun stories. See, maybe you can find one later. Was all uh, does a sixteen? Do you think that would work? Yeah, sixteen would be fine right. for that one. So, as Marsh is explaining, Dell uh, takes one of the notebooks he has in his lab and he flips to a certain page, and there are uh, sketches of what a movie theater looks like, both like the exterior with posters and like a sign or whatever. And like what the inside would look like and various kinds of things. And he shows that to Marnie. Yeah. Oh, oh, I, I've seen I've seen this building. I what was it? There's popcorn. Mm-hmm. But they they throw out really big bags behind the building. That that's the trash. <laughs> Why? Yeah, that's, trash. that's a lot of food. Yeah, Why waste it? Because um, 
Mark has no explanation. Mark ha- doesn't have an explanation for that. Uh, he's just kind of like, he started saying something, and then he's like, mm, I, mm, I, I, I don't actually know, but, uh, mm. anyways, uh, <laughs> Chris is going to yeah, trot right, over to have a. <laughs> Sorry, that uh, was you guys. Uh, Captain, I'm too used to, <laughs> too used to playing Tobias. <laughs> Cap- Cap- Captain is not helping. He's just sitting there, not even really uh, listening to the conversation. Uh, Chris is going to um, scoot closer to to Dell to have a look at the drawings. Like, ooh, that's really cool. I didn't know you did drawings. That's neat. Do you have any others? Uh, as she scoots closer, he kind of he leans over just slightly su- uh, in surprise. Um, again, his face stays blank as usual. But he tentatively goes back to the way he was sitting and just kind of flicks to other uh, pages in a bunch of his notebooks because that's the way he like does all those notes, their sketches, it's just all filled. Um and he has various sketches of like various buildings. He's copied various uh posters he's seen around the studio. There's various uh maps and things he's sketched out. He's got sketches of some of the people within the studio. Um he's got uh in one of them uh, one of the books he has taken out, there is like, they're like dramatic recreations of like, like myths based around you know uh, whether March is looking in or not. A figure that may or may not look like Larry. Uh, <laughs> March is probably like looking now because Del is showing the people, so he's probably it, looking. So he's got all these various kinds of pictures like that. Oh my god. And the cult is revealed. <laughs> no, not yeah, really. No, yeah, probably. <laughs> As a matter of fact, not, not at all. No, because, probably like, not. E- everybody that Dell would have drawings of is an actor. So they, they, there are pictures on the wall, like, not far from where they are, that, that have these people's faces on them. So it's not actually that huge of a surprise. Yeah, it's, <laughs> you wouldn't yeah. know the difference. <laughs> But yeah, he's got all these various sketches of various people and things and places. And even just, like, stuff he's found, like, uh, various plants and stuff he's uh, found, like, kinds of food. He has sketches of that and, like, what's ha- the insides of them and how they work. It's all that kind of stuff. And I'm guessing so most many- of it is based on the studio across the street from where we were found. Uh... I'm sorry, say that again. My brain decided to not work. So most of the sketches and notes are about the studio across the street from where we were found? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Because Marnie is an outside uh, tiny. Yeah, so she would she would be like very excitedly looking over the uh, yeah. Dell's shoulder as well. Most uh, of them are based around the studio. Some of them aren't, but most of them are. Like, Mark is looking, and it's like, probably most of them are familiar to him, and it's like, oh, okay. He's not saying and anything. Like, same as what Mark saw earlier, the text around the various drawings he has, some of it is in common, a lot of it is in the weird letters you saw earlier. It's just a mixture. I don't know if I should make Mark ask or not, because, like... <laughs> March is polite and you too. Uh, uh, Alright, uh one is asked, two is not. That nope. Cool. <laughs> Alrighty. Um so there is an odd sort of feeling that Cap and Mani and Dell sort of feel kind of Almost in, like in the soles of your feet. Del immediately starts packing up his notebooks. Yeah, Captain immediately looks at, at Chris. Like, is this it? Are we, are we going back to four size? He's not actually saying it, but that's the look he's giving Chris. 
Uh, Chris really doesn't seem to have noticed anything. She she's just sort of has has nodded appreciatively at all of uh, Dell's drawings and um, then gotten distracted in a very uh, not by a squirrel but in a very squirrel kind of uh, <coughs> oh way. And she's just like, "Oh, there's a flower bed." Um, <laughs> and Mar- she's sort of oh my god. Sorry, uh, keep going. No, it was just, she's just sort of gone to look at the flowers, and she's just like sort of picked a couple out of the garden bed, even though there's a sign right there that says, "Do not pick the flowers." <laughs> Oh my god. Uh Marnie like checks the bottom of her feet, make sure she didn't step in anything. <laughs> Marnie doesn't know what's happening, so he's not he's looking confused. <laughs> uh Chris? Chris? Mm? Uh is it time? She stops and sort of she's got like a, a handful of flowers in her hair from in her hands from <laughs> oh the god. uh from the flower bed, and then there's a slow blink, and then she's like, "Oh, oh no, yeah, no, we we uh, don't have a lot of lot of time left. We should we should go." Oh, uh, yeah. and Marnie holds up the little the little toy castle. Uh, where should I put this? Because it won't uh, fit under the rock. I, I, mm. um, I'm sure you'll find a place as we go back. Do you do you want to stay here near the flower bed? Um, I don't know. It's a bit far from where I usually stay. Um, and she's actually starting to like, like the it it catches in her mind the actual distance she has traveled, which like is only maybe a block and a half, but like to get to the the pretzel vendor, but it's a very far distance from our stu- from the studio. Yes, but when you when your uh, legs are only like an inch long, um, she's like, "Well, you can always just come and put it back where it was." Um, but I won't be able to adjust it or like put it back where it was until the rock shrinks. But I won't be able to move it if the rock shrinks. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I can help you if you'd like. Uh, sure. Okay. Wait, I actually. Mm, no, no, no. Yet, yeah, mm, I don't know because you're not supposed oh. to know. Mark yeah. in- internally again, not supposed to know what. <laughs> Uh Captain what you're you're like Captain Yeah? What? You're you're like a like a captain, right? That's just my name. Oh. Well I'm still gonna rely on you for this one anyway, because I can't make up my mind. Um should he know about us? Uh, I would really like him not to know. Alright, uh... <laughs> I can't tell you to live your life, but also... Alright, uh, thank you for your help, <laughs> but... Del says something again, that you can't hear it, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marnie is going to turn towards, uh, uh the... The man that helped everyone. <laughs> and she's going to hold out both of her hands and cast a web on him. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what, 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 the what is the save? Uh, it's just 12. <laughs> Oh, a net. All right. What, like, what do I, what do I roll to save? Uh, it is a. Sorry. It so it's a web, or is a twenty foot cube of web from point of duration, which will be on his feet. Uh, they're difficult terrain, lightly obscure the area, and each turn that you start your turn in the web. You have to succeed on a dexterity saving throw 
Uh, if you cannot succeed, you are restrained as long as the re- web remains. All right. And the web stays for an hour. That's then. All right. I'm going to say barbarian advantage, but no. Marge. Marge is not. Please don't follow us. Okay, bye. And she'll start running away. <laughs> what? Hello? <laughs> I thought this was like a little off shape and just grabbing Del and Chris to be like, okay, we're going now. <laughs> Oh dear, Chris is just sort of she. She doesn't weigh very much because she is a, a butterfly, but she's just sort of being dragged along. It's like, oh, um, okay, I guess we're going now. Um, bye. It was nice to meet you. And Mark kind of like shouts after them, but like, don't you need help with, with carrying the moonstone? As he gets dragged, I do want to say, Dell frantically uh, takes out a notebook, just writes "sorry" and holds it up to Mark. <laughs> So confused. Like, what? Del sorry because of the web spell. Like, <laughs> Can Mark make that deck save again now? Yeah, yeah, yeah make one more deck save. Del has a brain cell, it just he doesn't speak. So okay, doesn't have to do Mark After the initial shock, he just kind of like frees himself and he's like. He's like, he's so confused. He like, he wants to follow them, but also like, he doesn't know if he should. <laughs> he's like, what, what, the, what, what, huh, what? <laughs> <laughs> he's like getting away from like the area of effect, and he's just like, probably like looking at them. He's probably like, he's kind of curious, so he's like. Half following them and also like <laughs> half like trying to like remember what he was doing beforehand <laughs> so he can like return to it. <laughs> March has had a day. Um, <laughs> sure had that, that sure has been an, ha- an hour for him. <laughs> it has. Um, I'll get everyone to roll me one more perception check. March as well? Yeah, March as well. Why not? You might catch the edges of it. That's a 21. No, he gets the good rolls. <laughs> oh, golly. Okay. Cool, cool. That was busy being dragged, I suppose. Yeah, March okay. is the only one of the brain cell. Fun fact, okay. he's been dragging Dell once again, and Dell is much heavier than you would have expected him to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh, okay. So, March, you're not very close to this pack of very odd, odd tunes. <laughs> um, but as they run down the footpath, a much faster than, than you're going, a blue, purple, pink kind of smoke starts wisping off their feet as they run and it billows out into the street until you cannot see them anymore and by the time it clears they are gone and left on the sidewalk is a little pink castle (laughs) which Marnie can no longer carry (laughs) just kind of like looks at it like kind of crouches down like, look at the castle. Like, kind of look around. Like, what? Hello? What is going on? Don't worry about it. <laughs> We're just indeed worrying about it. Because what the fuck? It. Hello? There's no sign of them. Mark is just like. (laughs) Alright, Mark is just. Is the moonstone still in the bush? Or did did they take it already? Are they like trying to pick me in their way? You can't actually see it. You can, looking over at the bush, you were certain that part of that moonstone was sticking out the back of that bush, but uh, it does not seem to be there. Marsh is standing up, he sighs, 
and he walks away. He has, <laughs> he has dealt with too much stuff before. He has dealt with the stoop. He has dealt with the market and on site. He is still not over that. He is now not. He is going to not be over this for a while. He is just going. He does not. He is too tired for this, and he is also going to. He's going to probably later, uh, when like tomorrow or something, like go into go to the restaurant he works in, and just like don't make me take a break ever again. Does he? Does he realize he still has the tiny journal? He has a what? The, oh, the, the journal. Oh, he probably put it in his space and kind of forgot about it, I think. <laughs> Something to add to the fumble table. <laughs> yeah. Just a tiny, tiny journal. Oh, boy. Tiny journal written Richard's in Drawlix. journal monologue for the past hour has just been, Bitch, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> As for the others, um, you... When the smoke cleared out of your vision, you were back to your normal size. So, Dill at one inch, Cap yep. and Chris at two inches, and Marnie at four. And uh, you kind of you had a lot of momentum running <laughs> when you shrank, and you ended up in that bush, which is why Much didn't see you. And you can very clearly see him look at Marnie's little castle house. And then just sort of pull a face and then be like, I'm noping out of this and walk away. <laughs> this shit, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, essentially. Yeah, pretty much. He's just like, no, I am not dealing with this. <laughs> uh, Marty is immediately dogpiled by about 30 moths <laughs> that she is now the right Aww. size for to them. Aww. Aww. Babies. Um, Chris is sort of looking over at the castle is like, I'm sorry about your house. I thought we had more time than that. He could have helped. He could have fucking helped them. He could have helped them. And they... No. No. She, he Captain can't know the dark secrets. Know about that. Does not want and they were like the saying you the break in front of them. They were, they were like, oh, should we tell him the secret? Should we do... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, don't let him find that he doesn't talk in the first. Yeah, even if he yeah, wanted to, he couldn't in that specific scenario. So, yeah, unfortunately, when Captain is in the room, you know, I'm gonna get a perception check from all of our little tinies. Um, once more, we're feeling. <laughs> Oh, I got, I'm the one who got in that one. All right. <laughs> okay, cool. That's oh, some cool. some very nice rolls apart from uh, from Dell. Um, so I'm kind of pic picturing Dell sort of was just looking through his notebooks again or something like that. So he doesn't immediately notice, but everybody else, the piece of moonstone that you had got March to carry out here, it had indeed shrunk when the rest of you did but it is immediately obvious that it does not look like it did before it's broken it's cracked yeah. into pieces and was hollow on the inside oh. so Marnie will <laughs> kind of climb down to the the branches of the bush and go investigate it. Do you want to roll an investigation, actually? Uh, sure. I think Captain is going to investigate, too. Go for it. Hopefully Captain has a better than a minus uh, one intelligence modifier. <laughs> well, that, well, that's matey. I do actually have for the proficiency in this. Uh, two. 
Jeez. Cool. That's more than enough. Um, so you go down and have a, a look, and the sort of the the oval shaped piece of moonstone has been broken, and the only thing that kind of you can that comes to mind that's similar enough is that like as if it were like an eggshell that had broken and it was in it's in lots of little pieces that are very easy for you all to pick up the other thing that you both notice as you get close is there are a number of other things in amongst the broken pieces of moonstone they are proportionally probably about the size of marnie's palm and they are blue and black and kind of translucent, but give off a very strange glow. Hmm. Hey, Bubblehead, have you, you seen these? That is? Hmm? Since you're what? the one who's using this thing, uh, what are it is? Do you know? She's going to hop down and have a look, and I'm going to roll an investigation for her, although I don't see this going very well. <laughs> well she's got a plus two. That's not, not stupid bad. Oh, that's 22. Okay, cool. She's going to have a look. She's Oh, the moonstone's broken. Oh, okay. And uh, she's going to pick up a piece uh, of the moonstone and immediately stuff it into her hammer space without any preamble, and then she's going to pick up the other things. Oh, this is pretty. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of like a like a a, a, a lizard scale or something like that. Oh, can you can you answer my question, please? I'm sorry. What was it? Uh, what what are those things? I well, I don't I don't know. I think they're scales. But I I I don't know. I didn't. Did, did you break? Did you break this? No. Oh, wow. It was broken when we. Didn't you use this thing before? Not this specific thing. <laughs> um, how many of them are there? Of the scales, there are three. Also, Wiz, I just want to ask: mm -hmm. Can mm -hmm. I roll that? Can I roll that thing? Sure. Just wanted to ask. I pray for a good roll. It is not a good roll. Oh boy. Uh, even as Marnie uh, mentioned him, he's just kind of he's just kind of sitting there for a second. He's not moving. Oh no. Oh, bubble buddy, you you good? Uh, you okay. You better all insight. Uh, the DC oh, will be much lower this time. Inside, Is this the rated T for Tiny's moment? <laughs> I, just heard it. I got it. <laughs> that's a 21 for us. Oh. Nice. Oh, that's Whoop. A <laughs> Sorry, different server. In my defense, both Staria and Luis told me to do this. <laughs> Don't worry about it. 16, okay. So two 21s and a 16. In. Uh, text something in the group DM. Uh, so what did everyone know? So, Del, uh, he ended up he, sitting on the grass like everyone else did. Um, so he's just sitting there. He's got his back to everyone because everyone else went out to check the moonstone thing. He's shaking. Oh, no. Oh. And he... He can't really put his uh, hands on his head because the helmet is in the way, but he's just kind of sitting there, not looking at anyone. Uh, no. Hey, uh, hey, Spacey. <laughs> and Captain is going to approach, but like slowly and just kneel next to, next to Del. Uh, you, do you need anything? I think do you want do you want us to take you back to the studio? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Marnie will reach around inside her cloak hammer space. Um, see if she actually gets what she wants. It's not a one. And she pulls out what looks to be, uh, you know, those like needle, uh, needle press, like cotton toys. Oh yeah, yep, yep, yep. Uh, she pulls out one that's basically just like a like a needle press uh, caterpillar, and just kind of offers it out to to Dell. Aww, a comfort toy. Uh, do you go around in front of him, or do you like try to hand it to him? Because otherwise, he's not going to turn. She'll she'll kneel down in front of him and just kind of offer it out. Oh, uh. uh... So you come around in front of him, and he, like, almost instinctively just, like, scoots back a second. Like, he's not. Uh, and as you offer the toy, uh, he slowly reaches out a hand, and it's it's still very much shaking, and he, like, slowly grabs it, and he just kind of looks at it. And without a word, she just kind of... Uh, without a word, she'll just kind of, like, open up, like, the, like, l- raise her arm and, like, an open invitation for a hug. Aww. As he takes the toy, he opens his mouth as if to say something, but he doesn't. Um, and he pulls himself up off the ground, but he doesn't go for the hug. No. All right. She just nods and says, uh. It was a lot, but we keep going, right? Oh, did I cut out again? No, no, no just an, em- an emotional pause. Moment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's he's still silent. He's just looking down at the toy, and he just kind of looks away. Chris is uh, has started uh, floating up amongst the uh, the branches of the bush and is peering out, and then she makes a, an excited sounding squeak sort of noise, and she looks down at you all and says, "Oh, oh, oh, Cap! Um, there's there's a there's a penguin going into the studio. We can catch a ride." Oh my god! Um, a hey. Well, uh, are you okay for us to uh, up you back into the studio, or do you need more time? Let's ask the dice for that one. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Fine. Yeah, because uh, for once, Captain is actually okay with waiting, because there is no, a bus uh, there. Is he's a- he's gonna keep going. Like, he's gonna try. but. He's still very clearly shaking, and I'm trying to think. I'll let you roll perception, because he rolled terrible on those with saves twice in a row. So you can roll perception on him, if you'd like. Oh, boy. Seven. He's really high. Uh, I got a 14. I'll let Marnie, if you'd like. No. <laughs> All right. That's what I notice that. Um, you do notice. I'll, I will say with the fourteen, you notice that because of the way he's uh, because he's been shaking and the way he's holding himself is slightly different. You can see um, his hair, like the, how it covers his eyes, it's kind of starting to slip. But you don't notice anything other than that. Mm. And just kind of picks himself up, and puts the toy away shakily, and gets ready. Okay, if we if we if we're if we're quick, we can just jump straight into his pocket, and then and then we can get a yeah, we get a taxi back home. Come on, come on, come on, up here, up here. Okay, and she's gonna okay. go in and uh, try and uh, help Dell up to the top of the bush yeah. to a good vantage point. Uh, if you try to touch him, he's gonna pull back. He's Go on himself. Okay, that's fine. Captain stays next to him just in case to help 
if he needs to, but he doesn't touch a bell. Yeah. So, do I have to roll to like climb up to the top? I guess. Uh, nah. I think I think we're good to just say that right. it happened from here. Um, so a penguin is coming close and, and has come close to the bush. And the three of you are very easily able to jump from the bush and into his coat pocket. And Marnie, the last you see of these three is Chris poking her head out the top of the pocket to give you a bit of a wave. Uh, before, and I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, metagame this slightly, before a, a uh, little white mitten hand grabs her by the antenna and yanks her back down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what uh, happens. B- before <laughs> and, the uh, just before the the head or the hand pulls her down, uh, she sees Marnie just not really do like a wave, but kind of put her hand to her chest and then lift it up towards them. Oh, a nice yeah. little salute! <laughs> and that is pretty much where we leave it for today. Del and Chris and Kat managed to get back to the prop room with no problems. And Marnie has a bit of cleaning up to do, and oh dear, your house is sideways. Uh, hmm. Need to find a way to get it off the sidewalk. (laughs) And March. The next time you go to to work at the studio... And you glance at that bush. And there is nearby a very small black and blue scale which glints in in the light. It's not in the bush. It's near the bush. And you are welcome to pick it up if you like. Uh, you're but, muted. Sorry. Yes, you're still muted. <laughs> what? What? Um, sorry, I. <laughs> sorry, I. I, I zoned the fuck out. <laughs> That's fair. Fair point. Took Next time you go in. Like y'all were talking about me. Uh, <laughs> Next time you go to the studio, you find on the sidewalk near that bush where you hid the big piece of moonstone for those weirdos a very small blue and black little speck of a, of a thing and it glints and glows and you're welcome to pick it up. Uh, he will. Cool. Because, hmm. So, it might be a, a, a something uh, regarding what the hell just happened to that last day. It, uh, this is something that all, all of you guys get to, to add onto your character sheets as is your prize for today. It is a moon scale. And, uh, what it does, and while this is, is going to uh, need to be, uh, mounted into something for March because it's quite small, uh, it is basically like a torch that you don't need to light on fire. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So that that's your that's, that's your prize for today, and uh, so yeah, basically that's, like just that's automatic that's light. Yep, oh, you that's can cool. you can extinguish it like it's it behaves as though it's a spell, but um, otherwise, unless you say, "Hey, we need dark now," uh, it's it's going to just sit there and, and glow. Look, how big is it? Is it like um? It's it's mm, probably about the size of a pinky finger now for you. <laughs> All right, so not that small. All right, like it's it's small, but like you, it's big well, enough well, that you well, could be able to see it. All right, so neat. And uh, oh, that's where we get to leave it for today. Thank you for yeah. <laughs> doing some shenanigans with me, guys. Yeah. I hope you had a good time. Really good. Formal apology for the teacher Chinese moment, but also I'm not entirely to blame yeah. because Luis and Staria both dared me to do it. Yeah, yes. and that wouldn't to apologize. <laughs> yeah, but should I do it? And both of us says, said absolutely yes. <laughs> I was like, oh, really shit on that perception. What if uh, he finally realized, like, what the fuck just happened finally caught up to his brain and he's like, oh god, oh fuck.
Oh dear, oh dear. Yeah. All right. Well, with with that, I think I might go ahead and uh, stop the recording. Everybody, say bye. 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 Oh, the recording has stopped. Well, adventure <laughs> has been a thing, huh?